walking in a blooming garden, surrounded by falling rose petals from the trees, Francois proposes to his girlfriend Elle to break off the engagement. The girl awkwardly questions her lover. She cannot believe his words. These were the words Elle heard on Friday night, at a party to celebrate the return of the Duke of Clermont's second son. The guy doesn't mind repeating his words. He no longer wants to be Elle's fiancé. Nothing had ever shocked Elle more than this news. Surprised, the girl asks her boyfriend why he is talking about it so suddenly, because they are already engaged. Francois coldly and without any emotion says these terrible words to Elle. He doesn't love her anymore. Suddenly, a third person approaches the couple. A tall, beautiful girl with black hair, wearing a luxurious long dress decorated with flowers, appeared in front of the couple. It was Adelaide, Francois's lover. The girl asks to just say everything as it is, to say that they love each other. Adelaide asks Elle for forgiveness for what happened. Without any remorse, Adelaide informs Elle that she and Francois love each other. Embarrassed, Elle cannot understand how this happened. Adelaide slyly asks Elle if she will greet them. Yes, Adelaide wants the girl to congratulate them, but Elle has never heard such nonsense. Francois and Adelaide seem so unbearable to Elle that she can barely hold herself in her hands. But at one point the girl can't stand it. Ta punches Francois in the stomach. It's a pity, but she is not only stupid to welcome them. Adelaide is afraid for Francois and asks if he is okay. Adelaide is very angry with Elle. She scolds her and asks what she is producing. Now that Elle knows about the affair between the two, she wants to break off the engagement. Turning to Francois, she tells him to put an end to it. Francois remains confused in Adele's arms. Now the new couple have to tell the Marquis about all this themselves. But Adele reminds them not to forget to indicate the reason for which the engagement was broken off. Elle proudly turns his back and goes on his way. Adelaide, hugging her beaten Francois, shouts at the girl to stop, adding that she will not get away with it. Elle finds herself in a luxurious ballroom. Court ladies ask the girl why she returned without Francois. Adele replies with a smile on her face that she just broke off her engagement. Look at each other in shock, not understanding how this could happen. They believe that Elle's heart is broken. The ladies congratulate Elle on her freedom, offering her a little drink, promising that it will help heal her emotional wounds. Ale drinks his glass. The ladies report that Sir Theodore is present at the party, and it is very difficult to greet him. For many years, the son of Duke Cleant has not been seen at all. What is the reason for his unexpected appearance? Elle studied with Theodore at the military academy, and one of the girls wondered what he was like there, because they say he was like a mad dog. Meanwhile, Elle drinks her next glass. Only the girl began to answer the question when Francois and Adelaide entered the hall. Elle did not think that Sir Francois would turn out to be such a person. But in fact, she guessed about it from the first day they met. Then Francois could not take his eyes off Adelaide in a silk purple dress. Francois was Elle's love and her best friend. Maybe that's why she so diligently closed her eyes to it. Elle remembers the first meeting with Francois, his manners, behavior, how sweet, friendly and always smiling he was. The girl can't stand it and leaves the hall. If she had known that this would happen, then she would not have engaged him at all, although she was sure that he would fall in love with someone else. Elle cannot believe that Francois betrayed her. Tears begin to pour from the girl's eyes. She wants to return to the day when love was felt in his words and smile. If that happened, she would never love him again. Elle asks God to bring her back that day. The girl is in complete despair, twisting her leg and falling on the grass. Suddenly Elle wakes up in the room and realizes that it was just a dream. The girl hears a familiar voice that tells her not to worry, because he is nearby. Waking up in an unfamiliar room, Elle sees Sir Theodore in front of her. Elle does not understand what is happening here, and Theodore calls her master. Theodore was a knight of the Duke of Clermont, and the son of the younger sister of His Highness King Clare. Elle is reassured by the fact that she is wearing the same clothes she was wearing yesterday. Theodore says that he found her drunk lying in the garden, so he brought her here. Elle is worried that no one will see her at the party with Sir Theodore, but he still helped her. Although they spent time at the academy together, they were never friends. Moreover, Theodore was completely out of control at the knighting ceremony, that so-called crazy dog that everyone knows. Then the girl has a question for what reason this guy helped her. Theodore asks the girl what his master thinks about, but Elle does not understand why this crazy dog calls him master. There was nothing between them, but Theodore assures that he did nothing. Theodore begins to openly cling to Elle. Elle calls Theodore delusional and tries to run away. Theodore promises that they will see each other soon. When Elle returns home, the maid asks where she was all night and smells a strong smell of alcohol from her. The maid asks what happened, but Elle understands that she needs to hide the fact that she spent the whole night with Theodore. Elle says everything is fine and she needs to get ready for work. 
When all changes into her uniform, the maid says that in the entire kingdom of Ron there is no knight more suitable for submission than the young mistress. Elle is a knight of the kingdom of Ron and assistant commander of the November Knights. She is the heiress of the highly respected House of Blois, which protects the royal family. Elle tells her nanny that you can't be sad forever, but she's sad because her engagement was cancelled, and she just had a terrible dream for a while. Morris, the son of her mother's lieutenant, comes to Elle for training and they grew up as one family in her hometown. Morris says that she looks like her mother in her youth, but the girl says that it is too nice. The conversation is interrupted by Lucy. She greets Morris and Elle. Lucy compliments Elle on the fact that she was at a party yesterday but looks great today. Although Lucy is a commoner, she is well known among the knights for her outstanding intelligence gathering abilities, but she has not been promoted for many years because she is quite reckless. Elle understands that the gossip about last night has reached Lucy. Lucy says that in any case, it looks like it won't be easy for Elle, no matter how much the leader favors the girl. The girl asks Morris what all this means. Maris says that Lucy always has some problems, and Lucy realizes that it was supposed to be a secret. The guy says that first of all, Lucy should go to the office. Morris and Lucy go to the office, and Elle realizes that something must be there. When Elle enters her office, she sees that there is no one there, and she does not understand why there is such order, when she always has a pile of documents scattered there. Suddenly, someone approaches from behind the girl. Turning to face him, the girl sees that it is Theodore. She asks him what he is doing here. Theodore says that he wants to officially say hello to the girl, because last Friday evening he was ordained a Knight of the November Order, and appointed assistant to the deputy commander. Theodore says he's looking forward to working with Elle, referring to her as a landlady. Elle bursts into the commander's office and asks what happened to the post of lieutenant. The commander says that in her position she could not remain without an assistant. Elle asks how he could choose someone without consulting her. She does not understand why Theodore was chosen. The commander says that it would be nice if one of the members of the royal family was among them, and Theodore is just like that. Elle asks to change this decision, but the commander apologizes and says that the documents have already been signed, and he cannot change this decision. Elle sees high-quality wine in the commander's office, but she remembers that the commander is used to drinking cheap alcohol. She understands that it is a wine from a region that is part of the territory of the Duke of Claremont. But how did he know that the commander likes to drink? Elle asks Lucy if she knew about it, but the girl says she didn't know anything. Elle says that Lucy is lying because she knows everything, even the color of the underwear her highness wears. Sir Morris enters the office. Elle asks if he knew about the new lieutenant, and Lucy asks him not to tell Elle from behind. Letter arrived last night, with the seal of the royal family on the letter. Elle realizes that few people know the schedule of the deputy commander. It must be someone of stature, someone who wanted to help Theodore for his own personal interests. Her Highness the Princess is informed that Miss Elle is in urgent need of an audience. Elle congratulates Her Highness the Princess, and she in turn asks if the girl liked the gift. Princess Pippin at such an early age knows everything about military tactics, politics, and economics. She fully has the skills necessary to become the next ruler. The princess is surprised by Elle's reaction to the gift and asks if she expected something more unusual. Knowing about the latest news, the princess says that soon all the newspapers will write about Elle and her love triangle. The princess says that she is very upset and does not want the honor of one of her knights to be ruined by such a trivial thing. Pippin says that's why she gave El Tio, her cousin. The princess says that the best way to destroy a gossip is to create a new one. Pippin thinks that the only person who can calm Theodore is her dear Lady El. The royal family needs that, who takes care of the problem, and El needs something shocking to remove the gossip, and this means that their interests converge. El is very grateful for the help, but says that Sir Theodore cannot be her assistant. The princess continues to insist and offers Elle a 10% salary increase. Elle is unable to refuse such an offer. Returning to her office, Elle warns Theodore that if he does not follow her orders, he will be reprimanded much more severely than the other knights. Theodore easily agrees to this, which greatly surprises the girl. Theodore suddenly comes close to Elle and asks why she is so surprised. Theodore asks if she is afraid of him, but the girl says that it is not so, because a knight should not feel any fear, except the fear of his master. Theodore says that in that case she needs to keep him on a short leash and asks that he be called simply Theo. Elle dreams again that she is standing tied up on the street and they want to execute her for murder and treason. Going down to breakfast, Elle sees a newspaper headline that says that the rabid dog Clermont is now under the care of Elle de Blois. The girl is happy only because everyone forgot about the cancellation of the engagement. 
Elle understands that she does not want to go to work. The girl asks her nanny if she ever dreamed of death. The woman replies that she has never dreamed of such a thing, but she heard that it is a good omen, adding that dreams are just dreams and one should not worry too much about them. Elle stands in front of his office for 20 minutes and does not want to enter because Teodor is there. The girl admits to Maris that she is afraid of Sir Theodore. Maris gives Elle a gift in the form of a book called There Are No Bad Dogs, saying that she might need it and bids her farewell. The girl thinks that the guy is making fun of her. As she walks, Maris reminds Elle not to forget about the party for new recruits. As soon as the girl dares to enter the office, Theodore opens the door for her. Elle asks Toreador why he calls her master. Theodore tells her not to forget to call him Theo when addressing him. Theodore avoids a direct answer and says that for him she is just his master. Theo also says that he applied for this position through the master. The girl says that she doesn't care what the guy thinks about her, but from now on she asks him to be called her Lady L. Theodore directly says that he does not want to carry out this order. The guy says that he was so excited about the fact that they will work together that he could not sleep that night. Theo moves closer, but L begs him not to. The guy does not listen to his boss and L has to break him. Elle can sense that Theodore is enjoying the moment as his body is completely relaxed. Suddenly, Lucy enters the office and they see this picture. The girl asks if she did not disturb them. Elle is angry and asks Lucy not to talk nonsense. Elle sees scratches on Theodore's neck and realizes that she overdid it a little. Not losing an opportunity to get rid of Theodore, Elle asks him to go with Lucy to the main office and complete the paperwork. Lucy stares unashamedly at Theodore as she walks to the main office. The lady says that if he smiles at everyone the way he smiles at Lady L, he will be very popular among the girls. And Theodore thought that Lucy liked Sir Morris. Lucy wonders how Theo found out about her crush. The dear girl asks the same question that bothers L, why Theo calls L a master. But the boy cannot answer this question. Theo adds that there are a number of reasons for this, and he calls her that perhaps because she is Elle de Blois. Theodore and Lucy almost arrive at the main office. Meanwhile, Lucy reads the book that Morris gave her and assumes that she is mad here, because Sir Theodore is also human. The girl comes across a section in the book in which it is written that walking is important for a dog. At the same time, Elle feels very tired, and if she relaxes even for a minute, she immediately falls asleep. The girl feels sleep deprivation again due to night terrors. Elle just decides to get some sleep while they deal with the papers. How Theodore and Lucy break into the door. Lucy says that they did everything so quickly only thanks to Theodore. Elle does not understand what happened to Lucy because she was always so exhausted from the trips to the main office. What did Theodore do to make Lucy feel so happy after the main office? In this, the girl really sees the benefit of Theodore. He even cleaned the office, which was always such a mess. The girl looks at the traces of her hands on Theodore's body and feels ashamed. Theodore just keeps his eyes on Elle, and the girl doesn't understand why he keeps looking at her like that, which embarrasses the girl even more. Elle informs his assistant that for today there is enough work with papers and it is time to go on patrol. Elle reports that now the two of them will be out patrolling a lot, which Theodore is sure to be happy about. Elle realizes that what is written in the book about walks works even better than she imagined. Suddenly the elf sees a kind of fire in the darkness and starts to get his weapon. But it turns out to be just a cat. Although in reality someone was really sitting in the dark, and the girl thought that her intuition had failed her. Elle tells Theodore that there are rumors about a thief who has recently appeared. The thief is known as Zephyr, he robs the houses of aristocrats, and there are no details about him. This name was given to the thief in honor of the wind god because he is really fast like the wind. Elle tells Theodore that it's time to end his patrol, but Theo admits that he wants to go for a walk. Elle does find something similar between Theodore and the dog. Suddenly, someone sharply pushes the girl in the back. Theodore is afraid for Elle. It seems that the girl sprained her leg, which she injured at the last reception. Theo wants to examine the girl, but she says that everything is fine. But the criminal stole the girl's bag. Theo says that he should take Elle to the hospital immediately, but the girl orders to run after the thief. Theodore assumes that it was Zephyr, but he hesitates to leave the girl alone. But Elle orders Theodore to run after the thief, and without further hesitation, Theodore begins to catch up with the thief. Still, Theo catches up with the thief and swings his sword at him. But the thief turns out to be not so simple. He manages to evade the gift. The criminal tries to escape again, but Theo catches up with him. The hero knocks the man to the ground. Theo swings his sword at the thief, but the thief asks him to stop and help him. Suddenly Theodore hears the master's voice, she orders him to stop. Elle cannot believe that he was able to catch up with the thief. Theodore is a really fast learner. Theodore immediately asks a question about Elle's leg, 
and the girl answers that everything is fine with her leg. Maris appears from behind L and asks Theodore not to worry, because it was just a check, and he also informs that there is also a welcoming party for the newcomers of the 11th Division, which cannot be missed. Theodore expresses his outrage at the situation. L apologizes to the boy for misleading him, but adds that they've all been through it, so there's no need to be upset. L welcomes Theodore to the 11th Cavalry Division, hoping they will find common ground. Theo is thankful that he was stopped in time, because otherwise he could have made a terrible mistake. A former con artist, Lucy meets the heroes at the party. She is very glad that they came, because she waited too long for them. Elle asks Lucy where the commander is. The girl replies that he went to help with Zephyr's case. The jeweler repaired her highness the princess's broken necklace, but Zephyr announced that he was going to steal it, so he asked the commander to help transport it. One of the knights says that Marshmallow is really a rare criminal. He worries about poor children with the help of stolen things, although he is still a thief even if he considers himself a saint. Theo asks Elle for permission to sit next to her, to which the girl agrees without hesitation. A rich, delicious table was set for the party. Maris asks Elle as second in command to say something before they start the party. In her speech, Elle reminds them that they are here to welcome Sir Theodore, who recently joined them, and she hopes that everyone will get to know Theo better and take part in today's celebration. Everyone congratulates Theodore. In the middle of the party, Lucy talks about what happened when she went to the main office with Theodore. While Lucy is actively communicating with her colleagues, Elle decides that she can go to her office. Noticing this, Theodore stops the girl, asking where she is going, while calling her mistress, and all the knights pay attention to her. Everyone present was surprised by how Sir Theodore named the deputy commander. Elle realizes that she should have told Theo not to call her that in public. Theodore does not even tell those present why he calls Elle that way. He only says that he is in debt to her. In any case, the deputy commander decides to leave the party immediately. Lucy suggests asking Sir Theodore a question to get to know each other, adding that if Theodore does not answer the question, he will be punished. He will drink a special cocktail that Lucy will prepare. Lucy shows her special ingredient for the cocktail, its wine, which she stole from the commander's office. The others agree to play truth or dare, thinking it would be fun. This news causes Elle to stop her return to the study. She asks Theodore if he agrees to take part in Lucy's idea, believing that the sir will surely say no. But Theodore does agree. Elle thinks the boy is naive in his mind and gives his consent to this game. Morris is worried about whether Theo will handle Lucy's special cocktail, because he easily falls over. But the girl is sure that everything will be fine, and royals are used to alcohol. In addition, they cannot disturb such a lively atmosphere. Elle thinks that no one would dare to ask Sir Theodore just like that. The first question was for Lucy. The girl asked if Theodore liked Lady Elle. It seems that for a moment Elle felt a little sick from such a question. Theodore sensitively offered the lady a handkerchief. Everyone is eagerly awaiting Theo's response. Theo begins his answer, but Elle tells him not to. The boy agrees to carry out this order and drinks Lucy's cocktail. Theodore tells Elle that she knows how to handle him. The guy is asked how much he can drink. After drinking the cocktail, his eyes changed. Theo says that he doesn't know how much he can drink, as he has never counted how much he drinks, which is expected of a member of the royal family. The guy also adds that he usually drinks until he loses consciousness. The game continues. Elle begins to think that if the audience continues to ask such questions, then they may be in danger. And the girl did not come up with anything other than to declare herself a knight of Theodore, announcing that now she would drink for him. She decided it for the sake of common security. After the game, Elle felt a little sick from a couple of cocktails. On the balcony, she asks Maris if they would start talking about her behind her back even if she kept silent. Morris asks the girl for forgiveness, promising that the knights will be well punished in the future for such questions. Elle replies that everything is fine. She believes that if it were not for Lucy, Theodore would not have joined the team. After talking with Maris, they decide to return to the party and immediately see Sir Theodore lying drunk on the table. Elle calls the knights mad bastards. The princess hears a knock on the door. She asks to enter. It is the maid at the door who reminds her that her highness should go to bed. But the princess does not want to go yet. The princess thinks that Elle is having a lot of fun now. Meanwhile, the girl carries a drunk toter on her shoulders. Morris offers Elle help. Now they are driving Theodore together, and it seems that Elle is also drunk, but a little. Morris laughs at the fact that he never thought that he would one day help the rabid dog of Claremont. The boy did not even suppose that Sir Theodore would ever return to the capital. 
Finally, Morris and Elle bring Theodore into the carriage, and since Sir Theodore was in such a state, Elle decides that she will have to visit the mistress and the duchess. Morris offers the girl to take Theo to the duchy if she is so worried about it, because the duchess is friends with the Blois family, so the girl can explain the situation. The girl wants to ask Morris to help her in this matter, but the guy already wishes her a good trip. Morris reminds the girl that the lives of the knights who brought Theodore to such a state are now in her hands. Elle asks not to worry, because she will manage to save everyone's life, because everyone knows who she is. Returning to the party, Morris sees that the knights are already very drunk and can barely move. When Lucy sees Sir Morris, she falls into his arms. The guy asks the girl how much alcohol she drank. Lucy calls Maris a handsome bastard. The girl admits to the knight that she is here because of him, and she can no longer live like this. Lucy says that she will not let Maris go. Meanwhile, Elle with a drunk Theodore in a carriage is approaching the Duke's residence. While driving, Elle thinks about her relationship with Francois. Apparently she is beginning to accept the fact that they are no longer together, but she still thinks about her former lover. The girl's thoughts are interrupted by Sir Theodore. The boy wakes up feeling hot. The guy starts undressing in front of Elle. The girl is surprised and asks him what he is doing. Elle orders the boy not to undress. Suddenly the carriage wheel hits a stone, and Elle falls on half-naked Theo. The girl tries to take her seat, but Theodore prevents her from doing so by taking her hand. The guy pounces on Elle. The girl asks him what he is doing. Theodore touches Elle's cheek with his hand and calls her his mistress. The girl asks the knight to stop while she is good. Theo realizes that she is also a little drunk. When she first saw Theodore, he seemed cute to her, but now she sees that he is really handsome. Elle asks Theodore to calm down. It seems to the boy that this is all a dream. The girl understands that it's time to stop it. Theo tries to kiss Elle. The coachman reports that they have arrived at the residence of the Duke of Claremont. But Theodore does not answer him anything and does not open the door. The coachman opens the door himself. The Duchess is already waiting nearby. Elle gets out of the carriage as if nothing had happened and kisses Duchess Amelie's hand. The Duchess says she was looking forward to meeting Lady L and offers to stay the night. The girl says that it is not necessary because she has urgent matters so she must return as soon as possible. Turning their attention to the carriage, they see Theo there, beaten and drunk. The Duchess assumes that her son fell or was hit by a carriage. The Duchess is also worried about the fact that her son is half-naked. She wants to know what happened in the carriage and preferably right now. Amelie says that it is too late and offers to go to the estate. Also, the Duchess orders the servant to go to the Knight's Order right now and say that Lady L will stay at the Claremont Estate today. The Duchess tells L that she and Theo are the only ones living in the estate, and they turn off the lights at night, so she asks L to watch carefully under her feet. L thought she was no longer a resident of this land, but it seems the Duchess is doing her a favor. When the servants have left, the Duchess asks L to be frank with her. These words really scare the girl. Amelie asks if her son is being bullied at work. The Duchess had such a question because she saw bruises on her son's neck when she was helping him. Besides, the Duchess can't believe that a guy who doesn't usually drink is so drunk. She misses that their boss made him do it. Amelie asks Elle if she doesn't think she's a little weird, to which the girl completely denies. The Duchess says that she is very worried about her son. After the ceremony, Theo left and walked the world as a simple knight, and it was difficult to know whether he was alive or dead. Amelie also says that waiting for her husband worries her even more. The Duke of Claremont was a famous knight, but he disappeared, and it is still unknown whether he is alive or dead. But one day the son told his mother that he only returned because of Elle. Therefore, the Duchess thanks Lady Elle. Amelie offers Elle to occupy any room in the estate, and leaves with a single candle, so it gets pretty dark in the hallway despite the moonlight. Opening one of the rooms, the girl realizes that it is Theodore's room. Elle sees that the boy is not sleeping, and she wonders what he is doing. The girl feels a strange feeling in her stomach. Elle remembers how she stopped Theodore from bloodshed at the academy. Then Theodore was waiting for her, and he would like to think that she was worried about him. Elle dreams of a boy who looks a lot like Francois, but she can't make out his face. And suddenly Theodore appears, he calls her mistress. Elle asks the boy not to approach her. Suddenly, the girl wakes up in the same bed with Theo. The guy asks Elle how she slept. Theodore tells that he came to wake her up, but he didn't succeed because the girl was fast asleep. Elle asks Theodore why he slept in her bed. The boy replies that the master called his name. Elle says that he is talking nonsense and asks to leave before they see him. The guy warns that he will leave only if she gives him an answer to the question. Why was Elle calling out to him so desperately? Theo asks the girl what she was doing with him in the dream. 
Elle demands that the boy leave because she needs to change. The Duchess ordered a sumptuous breakfast to be prepared for Elle. Elsa stayed at the residence of the Knights. It has been a long time since she left Blois, so the Duchess offers to dine together more often. In general, the capital estate of Blois was sold for debts, but the girl replies that she appreciates the attention of the Duchess. Yesterday and today Theodore caused Elle a lot of problems, but the girl sees that today he looks like nothing happened. The girl guesses that Theodore does not remember what happened yesterday, considering he didn't say anything about it this morning. Perhaps it's best for Elle if he doesn't remember anything. The Duchess asks the girl if something is wrong, but Elle cannot tell the nobleman that the problem is her son, so she says that everything is fine. But the Duchess is worried, because it seems to her that the position of deputy commander includes many duties. The Duchess says that this time the delegation brought tea leaves from the east. Ron Kingdom has long wanted to establish trade relations with the eastern continent, but it was impossible because of the pirates. Amelie says that their current relationship is good, so they can drink this tea, and it's all thanks to the efforts of her brother, the king. Suddenly, the maid brings the Duchess a letter. It was a letter with the royal seal, and it was addressed to Lady Ale. In the letter, the crown princess asks the girl if she had a good time at the Duchess's estate. The letter also contained an invitation to a banquet, to which anyone can come, regardless of status. Even people who didn't receive an invitation can attend the party if they find a partner with this invitation. Discussing this event with Morris, Elle informs him that he will have to accompany the crown princess to the celebration instead of her. The boy says that it is rather Elle's duty as a guardian knight to accompany the princess. In the letter, the princess said that she wanted to invite Adelaide to the party. Therefore, Elle refuses to be a guest of this holiday. Suddenly, Morris and Elle see the knights in a strange state, they say that they are dead. The knights point to a bunch of their colleagues who could not survive the training. They were so lively and happy yesterday, Elle thought they were ready for today's training. Training after such a loud party turned out to be difficult for the knights. Morris wants to somehow support his colleagues and informs Elle that the commander asked her to come to his office after the morning training. In the office, the commander informs the girl that he has a very important question. He had a bottle of wine go missing from his office yesterday, and he asks if Elle has any ideas about it. Elle does not consider this question important and leaves, warning that she has a lot to do. The commander stops the girl, saying that he has another important matter. He tells that the thief Zephyr was seen last night. This news interested Elle. The commander says that last night a thief appeared to steal Her Highness's jewelry, but he prevented it. But he lost Zephyr during the chase. At this rate, it is only a matter of time before the prestige of the knights falls, so they cannot allow this thief to continue walking around Ron. The commander tells that the person who catches Zephyr at the princess's party will receive a year's salary as a special reward. Lucy sees spoiled, smelly bread on Elle's table. Until the day of the party, Elle decided to diligently find and eat spoiled food. She would have gag reflexes and severe abdominal pain which would be accompanied by a rash, and she would be able to use this as a reason for not being at the party, that was the girl's plan. But when a long-term salary was at stake, the girl decided that she no longer needed it. Lucy offers Elle to be her beloved partner at the party, she promises to worry about the girl. But Elle refuses such an offer, and explains it by the fact that she will be present at the party only because of the mission, despite the fact that this is almost the only chance for Lucy to be present at such a celebration because even commoners can come to it. After much persuasion from Lucy, Elle asks the girl why she can't just ask Morris, because he also received an invitation. As soon as Lucy heard that Maris also had an invitation, she immediately began to say that she had a lot of work to do and went somewhere. After thinking, Elle decided that she also had something to do. She needed to come up with a plan to catch Zephyr. Elle sent Theodore to get the books for her. The librarian tells him that these books cannot be taken at any time, and if Lady L wants to read them, she must take them herself. Maris helps Theodore to take these books, offering to write them in his name. Walking down the corridor, Theodore notices that the atmosphere today is different from other days, because everyone in the capital already knows about the party that will take place soon. Maris will be glad if Theodore also receives an invitation, as he is the second son of the Earl of Claremont. In response, Theodore expresses his disinterest in this invitation. Maris decides to play with Theodore and says that Her Highness would never invite a boy. Maris expresses her concern for Elle, as Adelaide has also been invited to the party, and it seems to everyone that it is clear who is Adelaide's partner. Theodore recalls how he once invited Elle to dinner, under the guise that he heard that the loser of a training match usually pays for the drink, and that's when Elle defeated him. The girl says that the cadets just laughed at him because he never lost. 
but in any case, Elle thanked for the invitation. Then Elle asked about Francois, and when Theodore asked if they were in a relationship, the girl said that it was impossible. Then Elle admitted that she really loves Francois. Marie asks Theodore if he is interested in the party now. Theo says that his mistress didn't tell him about it, to which Maris replies that Elle always kept everything to herself. Maris says that Theo's landlady needs him. In the end, Her Highness herself wishes Theodore to be present at the party as Elle's partner, to take triumphant revenge on these traitors. Theo likes the way the word partner sounds. Meanwhile, Francois turns to Adelaide with the question of what he should do, because his father is still angry with him for breaking off the engagement. The boy says he's become public enemy number one, and meanwhile Elle and the Earl of Claremont's second son. He does not have time to finish his sentence when Adelaide answers him that these news are only to hide the scandal from her side. Adele also adds that everything is over between Francois and Elle, and what is the point of his worries now? The boy is upset by his girlfriend's words, because she was the one who said that everything would be fine. Adelaide is angrily surprised that her boyfriend thinks everything will be okay after he disrespected her highness's sword. The girl does not understand what Elle found in this miserable idiot. But on the other hand, this is what allowed him to fall into her gear so easily. Adele continues her game and tells Francois that it's only because no one can understand how pure their love is. The girl swears to herself that she will send Elle to hell itself. There are only three mystical things in the world that Elle cannot understand. The first is Theodore, the obsessed dog of the Claremont house, who calls her mistress. The second is the behavior of Her Highness Princess Pippin. And the last, but not least, is endless downloads of reports. Even if Elle is often not in her office, she is always actively trying to do her paperwork. Entering her office, the girl sees Theodore sleeping. Even this assistant tries to avoid work. But Elle likes that Theo seems to be doing his job. Theo's paperwork looks flawless, the girl thinks he deserves some praise, and covers the sleeping boy with a blanket. Elle sees that the boy with whom she studied at the academy has really changed over these five years. During his studies at the academy, Sir Theodore was at the center of all kinds of scandals, and he could not hide his emotions at all. The girl sees that Theo's hair is directly in front of his eyes and decides to fix it a little. Suddenly, the guy asks when she is going to do it. Elle asks Theo when he managed to wake up. The guy says that if the mistress wants him to continue, he will obey. He knows how to wait perfectly. Theodore says that she wanted to take him as a partner to Her Highness's party, otherwise why would she be looking at him so intently? Elle offers to make a bet, if Theodore can finish the paperwork before her, then she will take him with her. In the end, Elle still won, but Theodore did a good job, thanks to his help, she managed to complete everything on time. Theo recalls how the princess told him that Lady Elle loves money, and the only reason she hired him as her assistant was because she gave her a 10% raise. So Theodore offers Elle a reward. At first, the girl hesitates, but she understands that her family now has a lot of debt. Theo offers to tell his mistress a funny story, after which she can decide whether or not to make him her partner. This story is about Adelaide. Once, when Theodore decided to practice when Elle wanted to be alone, he met Lucy. The girl said that she does not consider him a rabid dog, and she thinks that he really likes Lady L. The guy says that he committed bloodshed at the night ceremony because those people laughed at his mistress. Theo says that it must be difficult for Lucy to understand, but everyone who looks at the high lady will be destroyed. But he promises that as long as L is by his side, he will never do that again. The knights try to capture Zephyr, but he escapes from them, in the way of the criminal. But Zephyr jumps over him and continues his escape. L comes into action. It stops the criminal. The girl takes off the hood of the thief, and under Lucy's clothes, she tells L that she's too scary because it's just training. Is it necessary to be so serious? Everyone noticed that the deputy commander was very serious today. L says that they did a good job and offers to take a break and switch roles to continue training. At the break, Theodore approaches L and says that she is the only one who caught Zephyr in all the training sessions and he thinks that the award will definitely be hers. Elle believes that she had the opportunity to catch Zephyr only with Theodore's help. The more Elle sees Theodore, the more useful he seems to her. He understands everything well, and his distribution of time and work with papers is above all praise. The girl decides to praise her assistant. Everything was written in the book about caring for dogs. Theodore says Elle praised him for a job well done, but he thinks he needs more than just praise. Elle realizes that he worked very hard just to get her to choose him as her partner at the party. Theodore says that the girl does not lose anything because he is handsome and they will look good at the party. Elle asks who told him that anyway, to which the boy replies that his beloved mother said so. The girl says that she does not care who and what says, she wants to go to the party alone, 
but as thanks for the effort, she can accompany him to the palace where he can ask for an invitation for himself from her highness. Theodore says that he can't understand L, because coming to a party where Adelaide will be present with him would be a great revenge. Meanwhile, Duchess Amelie chats with Princess Pippin over a game of chess. The Duchess praises L to Pippin. The princess says that it will be possible to see a more interesting and wonderful L at the upcoming party. This will be the very day when the House of Claremont and the House of Blois will go together. The Duchess asks if Elle is going to the party with her Theo. The princess says that she was recently informed of a strange situation. Of course, the House of Bull no longer has such strong alliances with other noble families, but if she supports them, it will strengthen the power of the royal family and also show that they are not bad to joke with. If all goes according to plan, it will be a great advantage for both the royal family and the House of Blois. The Duchess says she's happy if Elle wants her son to be her partner, but she doesn't see that the lady is interested. But the princess is sure that these two will go together. After all, her loyal Elle will not allow her princess to be offended. The princess checks and checkmate her aunts. Amelie tells Pippin that of course she always knows what to do when it comes to politics, but things are not so easy when it comes to the relationship between a man and a woman. Meanwhile, before going to the palace, Elle tells her assistant that she has to go to one more place. Elle's place is greeted with joy by the children. The girl knows these children because her highness helps them through her. One girl gives a flower to Theodore. Suddenly a guy appears and demands that Elle take her hands away from the children. It's Jack, and he thinks she's only come to steal and sell them. He doesn't trust the nobility. Elle says that Jack is from the eastern continent. And recently there has been an increase in the activity of those who illegally traffic people from the eastern continent. This boy was a victim himself. He was sold to a nobleman who abused him. Theodore puts a flower that the girl gave him on Elle's hair. He says it's amazing, because he thought this flower was wonderful, but it's no match for his mistress. The girl says that she bought these flowers for her nanny, her highness and servants in the palace. The princess is very angry that Elle visited the palace, but did not come to her, leaving only a bouquet of flowers. Pippin asks Theodore why he is here. Theodore asks in response why his cousin did not send him an invitation. Theodore reveals that his mistress has absolutely no intention of making him her partner at this party. The princess's plan is crumbling before her eyes. Pippin nevertheless decides to give Theodore an invitation. But on one condition, Theodore must give her a small but very funny performance at that party. Theo promises his cousin that she will not be disappointed. Charlotte, the eldest daughter of the Duchess of the House of Lorraine, comes to the princess, asking if she is late. Pippin says that the girl is late, and very late. Charlotte wanted to meet with Elle, but the princess informs that she left the palace a long time ago. The girl heard that Elle was on her way to the palace, so she hurried here immediately after the treatment. Charlotte loves Lady Elle so much that she even created a fan club of her supporters. But the problem is that the girl is too enthusiastic about the night and constantly neglects her health. Even after recovery, she rushed here to see her idol. The princess reassures Charlotte by saying that she tried her best to keep her here, but she knows how busy Elle is, and the princess hasn't really had a chance to see her either. The girl asks the princess to at least tell what they are both talking about. Pippin says that of course they talk about Theo. Charlotte says it's all because of her. If she hadn't been taken hostage just then, Theo would never have become Lady Elle's assistant. The girl talks about the day when Theo returned to the capital. Theodore took their weak cousin Charlotte hostage, and demanded to give him Elda Blois. Because of this threat, the princess had no choice but to make him Elle's assistant. Charlotte looks completely mortified. Knowing her character, she probably feels guilty. The princess decides to intervene and asks Charlotte to do something for her. There are sweets on the table that Pippin brought for Elle, but she was so busy that she didn't eat a single morsel. So the princess suggests that Charlotte take these sweets to Elle. Lucy leaves in the rain and is a little uneasy about going back to the office. Because her drinking is a constant problem. Is it because she likes to talk so much? In any case, it doesn't matter now. Sir Morris doesn't even care about her. He's busy reading Zephyr reports all day. Suddenly, Lucy meets her friends. Lucy's friends must be seeing her for the first time since joining the November Order. They suspect that the Order has fallen on bad times, or that Lucy is simply absent from work. The girl denies this, she says that she is just secretly patrolling the territory. Also, friends ask if the girl was really pushed away by that night, namely Morris. Here Lucy can't even argue, and yet her friends envy Lucy, because she is always next to Elle, as they called her, this devil. And then the girl remembered that her friend Monica is a member of Elle's fan club. The girl retorts, claiming that it's not so cool to always be next to Elle. The boy asks Monica if she joined Lady Elle's fan club because she likes Lady Charlotte's knight. 
Monica categorically denies this. She says that she really likes Lady L. But the boy wonders why she blushed so much when she saw the carriage at Lorraine's house earlier. Lucy stands up abruptly and asks what that means. The boy says they saw the carriage a little earlier in the Eastern District. The Eastern District is a district where all the nobility live. Lucy is certain that Duchess Lorraine is under house arrest at Lorraine Manor. Lucy asks her friends if they saw where the carriage was going. The carriage was headed straight for the November Order. Andre's servant helps Charlotte out of the carriage. Knights welcome Milady in the November Order. Marcel tells Charlotte that he will accompany her today. But Milady refuses because she has come on personal business. Approaching Elle's office, Charlotte hears some noise behind the door. The girl is worried that Lady Elle would not be hurt and bursts into the office. Entering the middle, Charlotte sees a strange picture. Theo is lying on the floor, and Lady L is sitting on top of him. L asks the girl what she is doing here. Charlotte dropped the basket of sweets on the floor. L begins to explain the situation. She says that there was a misunderstanding. Charlotte calls Theodore a dirty bastard and demands that he leave Lady L. This situation brought Charlotte to tears. She can't stop. L tells the girl not to cry and that she is fine. Theo asks Charlotte how long she is going to cry. Elle decides that she needs to get rid of Theo for a while, and asks the guy to take some papers to the central office. Charlotte asks Elle if she was able to protect her after all, to which the lady replies with a smile that the girl arrived just in time and really saved her from a dangerous situation. The truth of the matter was this, Theodore found a book on Elle's desk called 100 Ways to Seduce the Opposite Sex. Elle did not admit that it was her book, she said that her highness had ordered a report to be written about it. The girl tries to take this book out of Theo's hands, but the boy does not give it back, but continues to read this book. Theo suggests that Elle probably likes books like that. Then Elle knocked Theo to the floor. Just like in the book, Theo says that he had no idea how Elle was able to absorb the material well. That's how it all happened. Charlotte is very glad to have helped Lady L. The girl says that she and her cousin never had a good relationship. L wonders what brought Milady to her. Charlotte says she came to give something back. The girl gets the sweets, but reports that they fell while she was getting to L. L supports Milady, saying that these sweets are very cute. These sweets are made from green apples, which Pippin loves so much. L tastes sweets. Meanwhile, Zephyr has already stolen an invitation to a party from an aristocrat. He lost the opportunity to steal the princess's necklace earlier, but he wants to make up for it. Neris comes to her uncle. The guy sees that his relative is drunk again at work. Maris reports that they haven't found a way to catch Zephyr yet. It was at the party that Maris's uncle had to inform the superiors that Zephyr had been caught. Maris assures her uncle that Zephyr will definitely appear at the party. Elle sees off Princess Charlotte. The girls have not noticed how time has passed, and the princess feels especially happy that she spent it with Lady L. Charlotte reports that she is much better and has decided to stay in the capital. The princess knows that the person who offended Lady L will come to the party, and she promises to protect the lady with all her might. After getting into the carriage, Charlotte does not notice her cousin at first, but when she sees him, he gestures so that she does not reveal that he is near her. Theo asks Charlotte if she likes Lady L. The princess angrily replies that Elle really likes her. Charlotte doesn't think it should apply to Theo. Theodore did not expect that the day would come when Charlotte would raise her voice at him. Theodore tells his cousin that if her feelings for Lady L are true, then she should know the time and place. After all, he is ready to give his life to save her. Theodore sees that Charlotte doesn't have that determination, but she likes Lady L, so he's very upset about it. Theodore says that Charlotte could use a little more determination if she wants to continue loving his mistress. Theodore pushes Andre aside and gets out of the carriage. Theo is very angry with Andre, and the bodyguard calls him a kidnapper. He even wants to get the sword. Theodore tells Andre that it is not him who should be reprimanded for the kidnapping, but Andre's mistress, giving him a bribe. Today, Theodore apologizes for the rudeness of the knights, but his mistress is already waiting for him and he leaves. Seeing Theodore, Elle calls him an insolent ignoramus because he dared to insult the knights of November. Theodore asks his mistress what is going on. Marshmallow left a sign on the wall Catch Me Knights of November. Marshmallow. Chapter 17. Lucy, Elle and Theodore came to the only store in town that sells paints, but the owner of the shop has so many customers per day that he could not remember them all. And unfortunately, this store sells the best black paint. Zephyr seems to have bought a lot of black paint. L asks the store owner to help them and provide a sales report. The owner thinks they want to collect even more taxes from him. He says he has nothing more to say and asks the knights not to appear in his shop again. The team realizes that only by force can they force him to tell something. Theodore bites the owner of the store, but he still kicks out his friends. The team returned with nothing. 
Elle says that it is not surprising that the owner of the store kicked them out because they behaved too aggressively, and Theodore also bit him. Theo assumes that the owner of the shop does not want Zephyr to be caught. Among the common people and the poor, many consider Zephyr a hero. Theodore believes that even among knights there are people who still consider themselves commoners. With these words, the boy insults Lucy. Elle tells Theo to watch what he says. Lady Lucy was also a commoner, but despite this, she is devoted to the work of a knight like no other. The guy admits that he was too careless. Elle asks Theo to apologize to Lucy as soon as he gets a chance. Looks like the team finished work a little early today. Elle asks Theo if he is going back to the Earl's estate, to which the boy replies that he also has to get ready for the party. Whether the girl likes it or not, she will have to meet her former lover. Elle then tried to wear clothes she was not comfortable in just to please Francois, but now she doesn't have to. Elle says goodbye to Theo, but the boy stops his mistress. Theo reminds Elle that she once said she didn't want to use him to satisfy her personal feelings. The girl admits that now she intends to take revenge. Theodore knew this. The boy tells his mistress that she is such a noble person that she has no need to take revenge on her own. Theo asks Elle to use him as her heart desires. That's what he's here for. Although Theo kisses her hand and shows sympathy in every way, she still remembers Francois. Elle touches Theo's head with her hands and thanks him. The girl promises that everything will be fine with her. The commander offers to discuss the plan of action at the party. Elle is the first to speak. She has a question. How Zephyr got behind their walls. They can only be accessed through one entrance, which is very well guarded by knights, so if he wasn't a knight, he wouldn't just walk in. The fortress is surrounded by high walls on all sides, so he got here somehow differently. Moreover, there is also a cliff behind the walls, so this option can definitely be excluded. Without the permission of the royal family, no one can enter the Knights of the Kingdom of Ron. Someone remembers that on that day the people of Count Lorraine visited the fortress. Elle begins to defend Princess Charlotte. She says that when the Marshmallow appeared, she was already at the Lorraine estate. Those around them begin to discuss that perhaps the princess is also supporting Zephyr, and that it is quite likely that Count Lorraine is behind it. The commander draws a conclusion from everything he heard. He believes that the Marshmallow is one of the knights. He orders to immediately check the identities of all the knights from the scene of the crime, excluding those who were not in the fortress at the time. He also orders to carefully check all those who come. Looking at the inscription left by Zephyr, Morris doubts that one of their own did it. But the boy suggests that one of the Knights of the November Order may agree with the Marshmallow's actions. Judging by the letters, black paint could stain clothes. Morris pays attention to the grass growing through the masonry, and it seems he understood what Zephyr's secret was. In the children's shelter on Gosey Street, there is a conversation between two boys. Chucky asks Enzo why he didn't tell him he got an invite to the party. Not only Enzo came, she also came and Amy and someone else. The guy says he hid the invitation on purpose because he knew Chucky wouldn't go. Enzo says that a party for all layers of the community is of course a good idea, but sending an invitation to the orphanage was another hypocrisy on their part, so the boy thinks that it was better for Chucky not to know this. Chucky says he has to go to the party to help Zephyr. After all, Zephyr was the one who donated money to their shelter. Chucky rudely explains this to his friend. Meanwhile, the commander reports that from now on the A-team is going to the party with him, and the others should wait in the designated place. Those who, by order of the commander, should not go to the party say that it is unfair and they also wanted to get there. Maris informs her uncle that the party will start soon. The commander decides to check his invitation, but he doesn't see it in the envelope. The man gets angry and panics. Someone mentions that Lady Lucy visited the captain's office this morning. Now the commander understands that he must become Morris's companion. But Maris manages to escape. Now the knights are taunting the captain. Before the party begins, Morris wants to clarify one thing with Elle. The girl knows that most of the residents in the West are knowledgeable. No matter what, it is quite difficult not to notice their influence. They also know that most of what Zephyr stole from the aristocrats was given to the poor. The girl asks what he is leading to. The guy says that let Zephyr be considered a hero, but when he is caught, he will be sent to the guillotine. Elle realizes that her partner is saying this because he is afraid that she might miss the thief out of pity. The girl says that of course a thief must pay for what he has done, and such are her duties as a knight. Today they have to catch Zephyr no matter what. But even if so, will it be possible to recognize Zephyr among so many people? Mr. Theodore arrives at the party. 
the guy becomes all the attention of the girls. Maris compliments Theodore, and he immediately asks where his mistress is. Suddenly, Maris notices Lucy in a beautiful outfit. Francois and Adelaide also arrive at the party. Theodore starts to take out the sword, but Maris stops him, saying that they should wait for Elle. Pippin enters the hall, the party seems to her very unhappy. The princess invites Lady Monterey, who accompanies her, to have fun today. Chucky and Enzo also arrive at the party. Then Elle comes, but late, the girl apologizes for the delay. Elle is dressed in the formal uniform of the Knights of the 13th Month. Before the inauguration, Theodore killed all the potential Knights of the 13th Month. The boy also heard that Elle was forced to join them. Maris tells us that the Knights of the 13th Moon belong to the Royal Guard. Since Elle is the only defender of Her Highness, she also partly belongs to them. Elle greets Her Highness. The girl asks the princess to give her the first dance. The princess happily agrees to this request. The princess says that Elle looks like a princess and all eyes are on her. It's a great revenge. Adelaide asks her boyfriend how much longer he is going to stare at his ex. Adele offers to go for a walk, but Francois says that he will stay here and suggests that the girl go alone. The girl says that then she will also stay here, because she does not want to be separated from Francois even for a moment. Adele plans to give Elle a real treat. When the dance of Lady Elle and Princess Pippin ended, all the girls began to ask the lady to dance with them. Enzo accidentally steps on Pippin's dress. The boy asks the princess for forgiveness. Charlotte also asks Elle to dance with her. The girl gives a compliment in the form of Knights of the 13th Month of Elle. Elle reaches out and invites Charlotte to dance to the princess's favorite tune. Meanwhile, Maris sees that Theodore is not at all happy that his mistress is so popular. Theodore says it looks like it is. He could not think that he would be forgotten at the very beginning of the party, and Maris said that he should not expect to dance with Elle. Theodore wants Maris to help him in any way possible to get Elle Charlotte away. But all the boy's attention is focused on Lucy, who is talking to some man. Maris leaves, but asks Theodore while he is alone to try not to do anything stupid. It was Francois and Adelaide's turn to dance. This dance is best done by Adele. Although Elle has sworn not to take revenge, she also wants to be capricious. The girl approaches Theodore and asks if she can use him from now on. Theodore says that this is the wisest decision of his mistress. Elle and Theo begin their dance. Elle can't understand what it means, but her ex-boyfriend Francois keeps catching her eye. Elle is a little nervous dancing with Theodore because the other girls are used to dancing with their partners. But Elle's ex-partner didn't really like dancing, and now he seems to like it. Theodore asks his partner not to think about anything now, because now she should focus only on him. The boy looks carefully into Elle's eyes. The girl thinks she's a complete fool for using Theodore as revenge, but all her thoughts are now on Francois. The girl has tears in her eyes, and she apologizes for not being able to give the necessary attention to her companion. Theodore hugs the dear girl with understanding. Elle demands that the boy let her go because everyone is looking at them. Theodore advises to let go of your feelings and sadness. But it would not be so easy for Elle, because her love lasted for ten years. The girl asks Theodore if she will get better over time. Theodore says that one should not wait for that moment to come, and touches the girl's hair with his lips. Because the most beautiful dog in the world will always be by her side. The princess asks Lady Monterey if she knows how many romance novels she has made Lady Elle read so far. Pippin thought that Elle would plan some interesting revenge, as in these same novels. But the princess likes what is happening even more. She had never seen Elle so confused. Suddenly, Pippin sees his aunt at a party, although she thought that such parties were not to her liking. Francois does not understand what happened to Elle, because until now she only looked at him. The boy thought that Elle's feelings would remain unchanged. In the eyes of Francois, Elle taunts him with the support of the princess. The guy thinks that compared to him, who is falling to the bottom, Elle still shines. As if the past, in which the girl loved him, no longer exists. Adelaide and Francois stop dancing. Adele sees that her boyfriend is looking at his ex and decides to leave. Everything did not happen as the girl wanted. She believed that Elle was very attached to Francois, and because of the breakup she should be grief-stricken by now. Adele pours the contents of the bottle she took with her into a glass with a drink. It was a poison that only took one day to start working. And suddenly Elle comes to Adele on the balcony to talk. Now everything is going according to the plan of the rascal Adelaide. The young man treats Lady Lucy to drinks. Suddenly Morris intervenes in their conversation. The guy learns that Lucy hasn't drunk any of the alcohol yet and sighs with relief because he thought she was already drunk. Is Morris worried about her? After all, when she confessed her feelings to him, he did not react in any way. The boy said that he was afraid that Lady Lucy, getting drunk, would confess her love to the first person she met, 
and would disgrace the Knights of November. He believes that the girl has already gotten into the habit of getting drunk and confessing her love to everyone. Lucy says she couldn't do that. Morris believes that the girl is constantly destroying the noble image of the knights. Lucy confessed her love even to the commander, and he got so fed up with it that whenever he drinks, he tries to keep her away. Lucy was told to wait for orders today and Morris was very curious as to why she was wearing a dress. Lucy left her post without permission, but neglects orders and receives a rather serious punishment. But right here Morris says that the girl likes this dress very much. Lucy calms down and feels that now everything is in order. Lucy drags Maris to give her a tour because it's her first time at the party. Theodore, meanwhile, is looking for Adelaide. Meanwhile, she treats Elle with a poison drink. Elle remembers their friendship with Adelaide, how good they were together. The girl says that recently one fairy tale is very popular among children in the kingdom of Ron. Once upon a time, the kingdom was ruled by one princess and everyone was happy. But one day the goddess of death appeared to the princess and told her that if she did not give up her kingdom, her people would suffer. But the princess did not agree to such a condition. With the exception of the princess, all the inhabitants of the kingdom accepted punishment from the goddess of death. Adelaide says she doesn't need to hear that, and El continues that it's the same story with the Aquitaine lands. It was the Aquitan estate that lost to the El family estate, and Adelaide is the youngest daughter of the sixth count of Aquitaine. The princess is afraid that the party will end so sadly and she has an idea. She asks Lady Monterey where Elle is now, but the lady, looking through the binoculars, can't find Elle for some time. Meanwhile, Adelaide, defending herself, says that she, the heiress of the Aquitaine family, staged and then lost a battle for land, only because the good-natured predecessor of Blois Victoria refused to marry. Elle now realizes that Theodore was right and Adelaide really hated her all along. The girl says that Victoria's only goal was to influence Aquitan through marriage. Adelaide says that Aquitan had the best granaries in the kingdom, but the land was taken away, and all for the sake of the people, and Bull's greed was to blame for it all. Elle reminds her ex-girlfriend that she still owes her a huge debt. This is Mrs. Victoria's debt, which she took to at least somehow help the Akitan family after the war. Adelaide says she never heard that Beulah was in debt. The girl says that she lost her head for a while, and she should not have been angry with her friend. Elle says that Adele became her first and most important friend in the capital. Taking the opportunity, Adele offers to have a drink. She says if they drink this glass to the bottom, then they can be friends again. Elle says she hopes so. The girl raises a glass to her mouth and is about to drink. Suddenly Theodore comes in and stops her. The glass falls and breaks. Adelaide begins to say that she never thought of Elle as her friend. The girl has the same rights in inheriting the lands of Attican that Blois has, and she wanted to get rid of Elle. Theodore understands this very well. The guy swings a sword at Adele, but he is stopped by Elle. Adele is coming. If the mistress of Theodora receives the title of countess and gives birth to heirs, then Adelaide will not have the right to inherit the lands. Theodore says that we need to speed up this case. Elle orders him to be silent and from that moment on, without her permission, she forbids him to manage the lives of other people. Theodore has such an expression on his face as if he had been wounded. Elle addresses him as Theo. Theodore says that he will always wait for her to call him that. Theo wanted to arrange a cool bloodbath with the participation of Francois and Adele, but he understands that kindness is contagious. Enzo tells Chucky that there's a lot of candy here and he can't believe he can eat it all. Enzo sees a bottle of wine and thinks it's juice. The guy takes a bottle of wine and wants to drink it, but he is stopped by Elle. The girl tells Chucky that she didn't expect to see him here because he hates parties like this. The guy says that they are not here to have fun. When Theodore approaches them, the children begin to hug him. Elle is surprised that her assistant is so popular among the children. It's time for the knights to remember their main purpose of the party. The guys from the shelter understand that the knights of November are not here for nothing. One lady's bracelet has already disappeared somewhere. Elle orders to secure the guests and block all entrances and exits. Meanwhile, Francois tries to talk to Adele, but she doesn't want to see anyone. The girl says that she understands that Francois now regrets that he broke up with Elle. Francois asks his girlfriend what happened to her, because Adele, who loves him, would never behave like that. The girl asks why she should love such a fool as him. Adelaide admits to Francois that she used him. The girl leaves and says that they don't need to see each other anymore. Morris and Lucy spy on the couple. Now friends know why the engagement between Francois and Elle was broken. They are sorry that no one will know who Adelaide really is. Lucy decides to tell Elle's fan, Charlotte, so the gossip will spread quickly, but Morris advises her not to get involved. Suddenly, a banana peel falls on Lucy's head. Morris and Lucy look up and see a man in a tree. 
Lucy yells at the boy for setting up a dumpster and he falls out of the tree. It turns out that it was Andre, the servant of Princess Charlotte. The guy asks if this is really the same Lucy. Andre reminds Lucy that when they were children, they often went out together. The girl expresses her joy to see her childhood friend. The boy says that thanks to Princess Charlotte, all his difficulties are behind him, and he is now living a new life. Suddenly, Morris is informed that something has happened. The famous Zephyr appeared at the party. The injured people are very much asking Elle to find the criminal. By this time, Maris and Lucy had already arrived at the hall. Andre immediately ran to Princess Charlotte to find out if she was all right. The knights didn't even notice how much damage Zephyr had already done. Princess Pippin allows the search of the guests to begin immediately, because a thief appeared at her party and she does not like it very much. The nobles do not like the fact that they are going to be searched. Pippin wonders what Lady L will do now. Ale pours a glass of wine on the head of the Marquis, who most of all did not like the fact that they were going to be searched. And yet the search begins. The princess informs Elle that her necklace has also been stolen. Theodore decides to meet with Francois. Everyone was ordered to return to the party, but Francois must not have heard because he was rushing off somewhere. Francois tells Theodore not to speak to him in a condescending tone. He saw with his own eyes that Elle had nothing to do with Theodore. Theodore asks if that's why he's sitting here, namely because his new girlfriend dumped him, and the ex has already found a replacement. Francois says that he does not approve of Theodore. A wild dog like him is not suitable for Elle. Francois wants to say that Elle still loves him, but Theo puts a sword to his throat and tells him not to talk nonsense. He could have finished him right here, but for the sake of his mistress he held back. Because Theodore calls Elle his mistress, Francois says that he is not a wild dog, but a pervert. Francois believes that Theo has no idea how much Elle liked him. He says that eventually Elle will come back to him anyway, and Theodore slaps him on the cheek for saying that. And Francois falls to the floor. Theo puts his foot on Francois' head. He wants to teach Elle's ex, and he even likes it if she hates him a little. Theodore asks if the boy is going to continue teasing him. Theo warns that if Francois appears in front of his mistress again, he will kill him. Elle does not understand how the thief could steal the princess's necklace because she was always on the second floor. Theodore returns to the hall. One of those present calls Enzo a thief because he saw the boy approaching the princess. The crowd thinks he's like an orphan and orphans need money, they screw him over. Chucky tries to save his friend. At first, Elle wants to protect Enzo but she remembers that he stole in the past. The princess says that more than anything in the world she does not like it when her things are taken. She asks Enzo how dare he steal from his party. Pippin orders the boy to be executed. The boy defends himself as best he can. He tries to explain that it is not him. Those who accuse Enzo begin to doubt the correctness of their actions. Elle doesn't like that the princess made such a quick decision about the execution. Elle decides that if the marshmallow is really here, then he won't let the innocent be punished. The girl pretends to follow the princess's order. Suddenly one of the ladies saw her bracelet. Chucky comes to Enzo's defense. Elle asks if he was Zephyr. Enzo says that Chucky has nothing to do with this and that he is Zephyr himself. Morris orders Lucy to grab the boy in light clothes, since he is the marshmallow that fell for the bait of her highness's game. Chucky orders everyone to stand, holding a knife to his wrist, because he still has a lot of loot from what he didn't have time to spend. And if he gets hurt, they'll never be able to find the stolen things. Elle sharply pushes Zephyr off his feet. You order Theo to grab him. But Enzo starts to hold Theodore, telling his friend to run. Everyone is trying to catch Zephyr. Common people help him get out of the estate. The boy aims a crossbow at the princess and knocks over the chandelier, distracting her. Lucy offers the princess to go to a safe place. But Pippin wants Elle to save her. Elle asks Theo if he can handle it alone. Taking his mistress by the hand, the boy says that he already said that she can use him as she pleases. The girl asks Theo that no matter what happens, he must catch Zephyr. Kissing the lady's hand, Theodore asks if he can kill him if caught. Meanwhile, Zephyr has already run away. The boy remembers how people who trafficked people from the east killed his mother. The nobleman who bought Chucky abused him a lot. Then the boy began to steal. Chucky wants to make all his friends happy. Suddenly, Theodore appears on Zephyr's road. Morris is also waiting for the thief there. Theodore swings his sword at the boy. Elle approaches the princess to find out if everything is okay with her. The girl takes Pippin in her arms and is going to carry her to her room. The princess says that if the girl is late again, she will be punished with 100 kisses. Before the party, the knights discuss their plan of action. Maris suggests that there is underground water, which they do not know about, and probably this is the secret of Zephyr's fast movement. 
The boy realized this when he saw greens growing through the tiles, which meant that water had been flowing in that place for a long time. They caught a man who will show them the groundwater outlet to the knight's core. He received a bribe from Marshmallow and helped him. For groundwater, there is only one problem, rain, because then the water level begins to rise. Before the marshmallow appeared near the knight's core, it was raining heavily, and he had only one choice. Since the body of the November knights is at a height, the water level here is not so high. The knights were not sure until the very last moment where Zephyr would run, but luckily it rained today. Chucky wakes up behind bars. L tells Zephyr that the boy is in the prison of the Knights of November. Theodore cut him down with the hilt of his sword. Maris thinks that once Zephyr wakes up, he should go to the main office and tell everything about the thief. L warns Chucky that in order to get a reduced sentence, he must tell where all the loot is. The guy says that they can do whatever they want, because anyway he already got rid of everything. And even if he kept something, he wouldn't tell where. L asks if he thinks that if he stays silent, everything will be fine with the children from the shelter. These words touch the criminal, and he says that if she even touches his friends with a finger, then he will not just leave it like that. Chucky says that he feels sorry for those who thought L was a noble knight, because he thinks they are all the same. The boy calls the knight a hypocrite. L says that she knows this very well. People consider her noble because they see only her good side. She asks the guy what he thinks about how much someone else's blood is on her hands. L considers further conversations a senseless waste of time. L goes and orders the sentence to be carried out. The boy decided that he is not afraid of death. He made such a decision when he committed his first theft. In fact, L decided to protect the boy from the nobility, and the only way to do that was to lock him in the fortress of the Knights of November. L tells Theodore that it was her duty to catch the thief, and since Chucky wanted to help the underprivileged, it seemed like a good option to her. Chucky sees the November Knight Corps in front of him, though he thought he was being led to execution. From that moment on, Chucky becomes a cadet of the November Knights, and this is his punishment. Of course, he will be under supervision and will not be paid until he returns all the money he stole. The boy is informed that Lady L did not have enough money, so she had to go into debt to pay his ransom. Theo and L arrive at the main office. The girl thanks the boy for seeing her off and says that now he can return to the Count's estate. The girl sees that the guy in one shirt is completely wet in the rain. L imagines Theo's mother and Pippin's reaction if he gets sick, and decides to stop Theodore. The girl offers Theo to come to her house and drink a cup of hot tea. L waits for Theo to come out of the shower. The girl can't stand it and loudly asks when he will come out. L regrets inviting Theo, plus she woke up the babysitter. The maid hears that someone is in the bathroom. Seeing off her maid, tells her that she is alone, and warns the nanny that tomorrow she will go to work alone, so she can sleep late. Theo comes out of the bathroom almost naked, much to L's dismay. Although the knights caught a marshmallow at the party, an operational conversation between the knights of the Kingdom of Ron was announced. The gathering is told that strange movements have been seen lately, and Her Majesty's anxiety is increasing every day. The issue of illegal human trafficking from the East has become even more urgent. The reason for the meeting is that they need to take action before things get worse. It is proposed to entrust this matter to the Knights of November, but Mr. Blanche is against this and offers to entrust this matter to him. It seems that day has come, the man found himself in L's room. L offered this room for Theo to spend the night. Theodore says that his mistress is so sweet and also avoids his gaze. It's just because of Theodore's appearance that L doesn't know where to turn her eyes. The girl wanted to put Theo to bed on the floor, but he says that he can only sleep on the bed. L decides that she will sleep on the floor and Theo will lie on the bed. Theo carefully touches L's clothes and says that this option does not suit him. He wants to sleep next to the mistress, but promises not to cling. L seems to have really lost her mind. The day when she lay down in the same bed with her husband came. The girl touched Theo a little, but a tremor had already passed through her body. Elle wonders if Theodore really likes her. From the moment of the breakup of the engagement until now, only thanks to Theo, she forgot about sadness. She doesn't want to admit it to herself, but if Theo hadn't been with her at the party today, she might just not be able to stand it because of her feelings for Francois. Thanks to Theo, she even received a reward for apprehending Zephyr. The girl thinks that Theodore is already asleep and decides to go to sleep on the floor. Suddenly the guy wakes up and says that he better leave. Theodore won't let Elle sleep on the floor, because he is very often visited by bad thoughts. Theodore touches the girl's cheek and says that the more time he spends with her, the worse it is for him. He admits to the girl that he likes her, so if she doesn't like it, he wants her to say so. Elle says she doesn't want to turn him down. 
Theo likes this answer because if the girl refused, she would hurt his feelings very much. And a passionate kiss takes place between these two. Theo puts Elle on the bed. She has no idea how long the boy has been waiting for this. He says that even if his mistress disappears, he will be able to live on only by keeping this moment in his memory. If he could, he would never let her go from his arms so that she would never be able to leave him. And the couple kisses again. Waking up in the morning, Theodore does not see Elle nearby. And the girl came to work at four in the morning. She left home early so as not to cross paths with Theo. Lucy correctly guesses the reason for her commander's behavior. Elle hints that it seems that everything is not over with one kiss. Friends start discussing yesterday's event. Meanwhile, Theodore stands under Morris's cabinet. The boys go into the girl's office together. Elle worries that Theo won't hear their conversation. The girl is also worried that Theodore will not tell about what happened yesterday. Elle couldn't think of anything better than to simply escape through the window. But Theo jumped after her and caught up with the girl because he wants to talk to her. The girl nevertheless decides that she should not run away from problems. She has to take responsibility for the wild dog Theodore. Theodore apologizes because he believes that he made a mistake yesterday. The guy asks to forget about everything and promises that this will not happen again. Because he thinks that the girl regrets about yesterday. These words put the girl in a stupor. The girl thinks that this is probably the best, so she does not need to take responsibility for him. But my soul felt very empty for some reason. Suddenly Theodore pulls the girl close to him. Behind her, she sees a sword flying at her. Theo asks not to worry about anything, because he is always there. Theodore does not stop hugging the girl, although everything is fine. This situation made the boy remember the past in which he lost a dear person. He wants to go back that day. Charlotte fell asleep and Andre decides to cover her with a blanket. Suddenly, the princess suddenly wakes up in a panic. The girl asks why Theo became Lady L's assistant. The princess is haunted by the feeling that her cousin stole Lady L from her. Andre says that he noticed that since the party itself, his mistress seems very sad. The guy really wants to cheer her up. Suddenly Andre sees through the window that guests have visited them. People flock to Princess Charlotte to join L's fan club. Theodore thinks that because of what happened, maybe they won't be comfortable being together for a while. The boy enters L's office. The girl says that he is late. The clock reads 9 a.m. in 20 seconds. Suddenly, the boy notices that there is a pile of documents on the table. Elle says that all this should be sorted out today, but Theo is competent enough in these cases, and such volumes of work should not be a problem. Is this revenge on Theodore? But the girl warns him in advance so that he does not dare to think that she is trying to play on him in such a childish way. But Theodore sees in the girl's behavior that she resents him for yesterday, and this means for him that she does not regret anything and let the boy want to hug Elle right here and now. He understands that this cannot be done, because if he gets close to her before time, she can run away again. Theo happily agrees to the girl's order and wants to make Elle fall in love with him. Elle thought for a long time, but still she cannot understand what this guy is thinking. She wants to understand if he really cares about their kiss. Theo says that he likes the way she looks at him, but he says that he's afraid that she will soon make a hole in him with her gaze. The guy offers to guess what his mistress is thinking about now. On the eastern continent, which is on the other side of the sea, a new technique has appeared that allows you to know the thoughts of another person with just one glance. When Theodore traveled through those lands, he learned a little about this technique. The guy offers to take the test right away. Theo thinks that if he gets even closer to her, he seems to understand. Who will be the first to give up in this game? It seems Theodore made a conclusion and understood what his mistress was thinking when she looked at him and he really guesses what she's thinking about last night's kiss. Elle is angry. Meanwhile, they enter the office. The knight reports that there has been a murder. Arriving at the scene of the crime, Elle sees a dead girl lying on the ground. They say that because of the marks on the neck, the preliminary cause of death is strangulation. The girl orders to report as soon as they find out the identity of the deceased, and not to forget the results of the autopsy. Elle notices that something is wrong with Theo. She asks him what happened. The girl was very scared without realizing it. She asks her partner not to worry, because he is not happy here. In the West, murder cases are solved in no more than two weeks, and the criminal will be caught. With a sad look, Theodore says that's not what he's worried about. Elle wonders what Theodora is worried about, but she doesn't have time to find out because she is being called. Beside the dead girl's body lay a bitten pippin apple. There is only one person who specially grows this fruit. The main thief in the story of Snow White, who wishes the death of his mistress. And this is the queen. Chucky shows himself in military uniform to his friends. Everyone is delighted with his form. The guy says that formally he is a knight of November only for a while. When he turns 15, he will be sent to a military school. 
Chucky expresses his distaste for L. He says that she does whatever she wants and it pisses him off. The boy asks Enzo if he will be able to receive the necessary treatment if he is not around. The boy reassures his friend and says that a few days ago the mistress came to him. Her Highness supports the treatment of sick children. Chucky asks how long they knew that he was the marshmallow. Friends say that they lived together for so many years, and how could they not notice it? The boy perceives it as teasing him, and says that he is leaving. Enzo hugs his friend and, thanking him, asks to visit more often. The knights go about their business in the library. Lucy is interested in the details of Al and Theodore's kiss. The girl admits to herself that she is jealous of this couple. After all, Mr. Morris only looks at papers every day, and he has no time for a normal conversation. Lucy approaches Maris and says that after the party, gossip began to circulate that she and him are in a secret relationship. The boy says that if she does not want to hear such a thing, he will make a remark to the other knights. The girl replies that everything is completely wrong. Looking back at L with Theodore, Lucy thinks that the two have become very close since Lady L's engagement was broken off. Even one look at them makes her die of envy. Knights summarize their work. They did not find the necessary information. It is obvious that such cases were not reported to the head office. It is strange, because the case is quite noisy. Theodore says that five years ago, before he went on a trip, a similar murder took place near the estate of the Count of Lorraine. Lucy says it's late and suggests hurrying to the boutique. In the store, Theodore tries on a bunch of outfits. While investigating a murder, knights can dress up in casual clothes, hiding their identities, and patrol the streets. Finally, Theodore was chosen such an image so that he would not draw much attention to himself. Since Elle was not around, she asked to give the note to Theodore. The note reads from Michaelo, at 12.30 at the fountain on Nance Street, don't be late. P.S. Dress more modestly. Theodore is interested in what it all means and who is Mikhail. Near the fountain, someone is calling Michael, but Theo refers only to his name. Looking around, the boy sees a well-dressed elf in a green dress and with an umbrella from the sun in her hand. Theodore is delighted with his mistress. The girl asks to be addressed as Luna. Today Mikhail will become Luna's fiancé. This is the day when they can forget who they are. The couple gently holds hands. For some reason, from the very beginning, Elle seems that this will not lead to good. Elle looks at the cakes in the window, and it seems that they are probably very expensive. She asks Theodore if they will find any clues here. Theo says that maybe the victim has been to this place a lot and he thinks they might be able to find out some information. He takes the cake in his hands, tightly pressed to Elle. The guy came so close to Elle that she thought she could hear his heart beating. The girl questions the fact that he said that a similar murder took place near the estate of Count Lorraine. Elle suggests that after five years the killer reappeared and killed Anna Sophia. The guy asks where such quick conclusions come from. Theodore says that this is not very good. That Elle has no other thoughts besides work, because now they are playing the role of lovers on a date. Theo offers the girl to taste the cake. Elle hesitates, but still tastes the cake. The girl decides that it is necessary to quickly feed the remains of the cake to this ignoramus and get out of here. Meanwhile, Lucy patrols the area with Chucky. She asks him if he heard that the killer's victim was a 12-year-old girl. She warns the boy that he and the children from the shelter should be more careful, because Theodore told that a similar murder had happened before. In general, Lucy wanted to be sent on patrol with Maris, but she was put in charge of Chucky. Suddenly, the knights see how Andre helped Monica carry the basket. Monica offers the guy to have dinner at her house. Just at that moment Lucy appears in front of them. Monica suggests that everyone go to dinner together, but Andre refuses because he has to go on business, and the girl hoped that she would be left alone with him. When Chucky learns that Monica is an aristocrat, he doesn't want her to find out who he really is, so the guy decides to give up dinner. Lucy guesses that the problem lies in Monica's aristocratic background. The girl also abruptly refuses dinner, explaining that she has important things to do. Lucy doesn't want to leave Chucky alone because she might get hurt by L. Meanwhile, L and Theodore start paying for their meetings. When a girl sees a check, the amount seems exorbitant to her. It turns out Theodore forgot his wallet when he was changing. L wasn't ready to pay such a check for both of them. The saleswoman hopes they will not run away without paying. Suddenly, the owner of the store comes and informs that another person has already paid for them. It seems strange to L, because who would pay such big money for them? Suddenly, the knights see Francois in front of them. Duchess Amelie unexpectedly comes to Pippin. She reports that it looks like Theo and L are getting married. In fact, Theodore's mother saw him playing lovers with Elle in a cafe and thought that it was all true. The Duchess says that she wholeheartedly supports their relationship. 
The princess guesses that the ant met them during a secret patrol, but she decides to leave everything as it is and follow the events. And Amelie is already thinking how wonderful it would be to arrange a wedding in the palace. She also notices that Pippin does not eat her favorite apples and asks why she did not even touch them because she likes them so much. The princess says that there is simply no mood, but in fact it is all because of the murder near which her favorite apple was found. But Pippin also thinks that this is a coincidence. She thinks that she should try an apple. Elle notices that Francois has a plaster on his cheek. Did someone beat him? Francois says that after that party he only thinks about her. Only after they parted did he realize how important Elle was to him. The guy apologizes, but says he was wrong. He asks to correct his mistake if there is still an opportunity. Theodore tells Francois that he warned him not to let his eyes fall on him. Only now did Francois notice Theodore. He says that he did not promise to obey him, and adds that he is not worthy to be next to Elle. Theodore is very angry at this answer and wants to approach Francois, but Elle stops him, asking him is Michael if he knows this boy. She says that this is the first time she has seen this person, and it seems that he just confused her with someone. Theodore starts playing along with Elle, and asks if Luna is also seeing this moron for the first time. The girl suggests not to waste time in vain, but she tells Mihail Theodore to go quickly and enjoy their meeting. Francois asks the girl to wait. He says that he knows she is just angry with him, and promises to write about what she cannot say, and asks her to answer. Having moved away from the meeting place, Elle laughs heartily at her ex. It turns out that it is not so difficult for her to control herself next to Francois. She is even glad that she saw what a rotten person he turns out to be. Now Theodore really wants to hug Elle, but at first he wanted to wait for her indifference to him to turn into sympathy, but still he wants to confess her. And only Theodore begins to speak, as Elle notices that something sparkles in the water. Meanwhile, Lucy bought Chucky bread with the last of her money, but the boy says that he does not want to eat and refuses. Lucy tells Chucky that of course he'll be uncomfortable sometimes. After all, the aristocrats were Zephyr's enemies. The guy asks if she knew why she followed him. He says that she could stay at her rich friend's house and eat delicious food. Chucky says that if it was her last money, he will give it back. Lucy says that a simple thank you will do, and asks her and Elle not to call her you anymore. The girl says that even if he is not himself, but there are no bad people among their knights and offers to live amicably. Suddenly the guy says that he doesn't like those who talk and make a lot of noise. Now Lucy offers him not to eat this bread. Elle and Teodor suddenly appear. Elle offers to return to the core of knights. Lucy says that's fine, of course, but they'd like to get a bite to eat. The next day, the friends go out on patrol again early in the morning. Lucy was paired with Chucky again. Suddenly, the girl meets Aunt Callie. She is all in tears and shouts the name of her daughter Monica. She was killed according to the same scenario. Lucy had known this girl since childhood, so she was in such a shock that she took time off. The captain's intuition tells him that these two murders were committed by the same person. Judging by the marks on the neck, there is a probability that the criminal is equally good with both hands. And at both places of the murder, Pippin's gnawed apple was found. And that's not all, the criminal happened to be quite cruel. Because Monica Callie was killed in her private home, no signs of a forced break-in were found, so the killer could have been someone she knew. In order to catch this scoundrel, all forces must be mobilized. Theo says that it will definitely happen again, because the queen repeats the plot of Snow White. Presumably, the criminal was very impressed by the plot of this tale. Elle goes to the palace. Theodore says that it is already too late and offers to do it together tomorrow. The girl orders to let go of her hand. Who knows when the criminal may get to Princess Pippin. She wants to be her protector now. Theo says that this cannot be done, because if she leaves now, it will only cause anxiety. The guy manages to convince the girl that it's not worth doing now. Elle offers to have dinner together. Meanwhile, Lucy blames herself for the death of her friend. She thinks that if she had stayed with her that day, this would not have happened. That was their last meeting. Suddenly, the girl hears a sound behind the door. Opening the door, the girl sees El Teodor and Maris, who knock down her fence. Friends are preparing dinner. They thought it would be great to get together for dinner like this, but Maris obviously wouldn't feel comfortable sitting alone in the company of El and Theodore. Lucy misses that they came to support her. El and Theodore are trying to put the fence in place. Theo, as always, is courting a girl. Lucy goes outside and says that it is better to leave the fence as it is. She will fix it herself but the girl asks for compensation because she is renting an apartment. Lucy thanks Morris for a delicious dinner. Theodore wipes Elle's mouth from food. Suddenly, Maris sees a letter on the table. 
Lucy says that this letter was given to her by Monica's parents, and she treasures this message very much. Elle notices that on the letter is the same map that they found in the river near the scene of the first crime on the other side, but they never understood what it meant. Lucy explains that these cards were created by Charlotte for the members of Elle's fan club. The girl also says that she heard one interesting gossip. Princess Charlotte stayed at the estate of Count Lorraine. Judging by everything, there is a room in the estate where even servants are forbidden to enter, and there are witnesses who said that they heard terrible sounds coming from that room. Elle has an idea. She orders Lucy and Theodore to join Elle's fan club. Once Charlotte made a print of Elle's hand, and the girl asked Pippin about it, but she did not answer why. Lucy and Theodore arrive at the Count's house. Theodore is selected for Lady Elle's fan club. Lucy is treated to tea from a cup with a picture of Elle. The atmosphere of the club is a bit stressful, so the girl wants to go home already. The girl decides to scout the club while all attention is focused on Theodore, and Charlotte enters the room, apologizing for being late. The princess did not expect to see her cousin here. Charlotte reminds the participants of the first rule of the club, not to accept men into its ranks. Theo agrees to leave, but on the way out he warns Charlotte that all of the killer's victims were members of this club. The guy also says that her faithful servant Andre is also under suspicion, because on the day of the murder he met the victim. Theodore returns to L and tells that he was kicked out of the club almost immediately but he took with him a pillow with the image of his mistress. Theo says that he will take this pillow to his room and whenever he misses his mistress, he will use it. El gets angry and tears the pillow. Theo asks the girl if she is going somewhere, because he sees that she is wearing a formal uniform. A boy and a girl are traveling in a carriage. Theo can see that El is very upset today. If you think about it that way, the killer appeared earlier than he imagined. What if he can't save El at this rate? Theo wants to tell the secret he is hiding, but will the girl believe him? Only Theodore dares to tell everything, how they arrive at their destination. They arrived at the cemetery to the graves of Anna Sophia and Monica. Elle simply wanted Theodore to share this sadness with her, although she did not know those girls well. But she really felt sorry for them. The girls ask Lucy how it happened that she became a fan of Elle. But the girls don't let her answer because they understand everything perfectly. In their opinion, Lucy became a fan of Elle because she is very cool. However, the girl cannot stand the atmosphere of the club and asks the princess to go to the toilet. Lucy wants to investigate a secret room in the estate, but Charlotte sees her. The princess asks Lucy what she is doing here. The opening the door, Lucy sees that this room is filled with gifts. All these gifts came as a donation to the club in the name of Lady L. The princess says that even though they seem to be just a group of Lady L's fans, they are actually a bunch of people she once helped. And to thank Elle, the girls decided to make donations on her behalf. Lucy didn't doubt the princess, but she was worried about the rumors about scary screams coming from this room. Late night, Princess Pippin is still awake. She asks Monterey if anything about Lady Elle has been heard. The maid replies that she has not been contacted yet, and she is probably busy with work. Today, a red echo appeared in the sky, which is considered a bad sign. Once, five years ago, when Pippin's parents went to the eastern region, Charlotte offered her a walk alone, which was not allowed for royals. Charlotte told the princess to meet her bodyguard, but Pippin decided to go alone. The girl met Monterey at the market. Mother always told Pippin that it was dangerous to walk alone outside the palace, and it was necessary to listen to her. So the princess was stolen. One woman brought the hardened princess a blanket in which a sword was hidden. The woman said that she is a servant of her highness, and the royal guard will be here soon, you just have to be patient. But she will not wait for help, and will start to bring out the princess herself. The woman says that the princess has caught a cold and cannot be kept here any longer, but she is not being released from the dungeon. She hits the guard with a sword, and the woman who then saved the princess was none other than Elle de Blois. Ale is so necessary now for the princess. Suddenly, Pippin sees Elle next to him on the bed, holding her hand. The princess says that on the day she was stolen, she does not remember the expression on Charlotte's face at all, and this worries her. Theodore visits his mother. The boy is immersed in his thoughts that he needs to save Elle, because he remembers the past life in which they were also together, and he slips through Amelie's ears about the wedding that she invented for herself. Finally, the boy came to his senses. One of the nights, after the interrogation, thanks Andre and the Count of Lorraine, Christophe. The knight informs that very soon Mr. Andre will be removed from the list of suspects, because several people have confirmed that they saw him at the estate of the Count of Lorraine, at the time when Monica Calley was killed in the capital. But on the other hand, five years ago, near the estate of Count Lorraine, a young girl was murdered. Christophe denies that this ever happened. 
The knight says that she should not have brought up this topic, but she leaves. Andre says that he should probably also return, because he could not even imagine that he would be listed as a suspect. The Count asks Andre not to go, because everything has already been decided, and he and Antoine have not seen him for a long time. In addition, they still need to find the ships that are illegally transporting people for trade in the eastern continent as soon as possible. Andre recently managed to find such a thing. Countess Amelie invites Elle to dinner. The girl asks why all these flowers she sees. The Countess says that it is a royal wedding, and she wanted to choose flowers that would best suit Elle. The girl thinks that someone from the royal family is going to get married. The Countess offers her son to also help choose flowers for Elle. Theodore says that if he had to choose, he would choose green grapes. It seems to him that the aroma of fresh grapes is very suitable for its owner. Now Amelie offers the girl to try on a dress. Theodore is interested to see how Elle looks in a dress. At the same time, he thinks whether Andre is involved in the murder. He believes that the queen is somehow related to Count Lorraine. One day, after the initiation, while running away, he found himself in the grounds of the Count of Lorraine's estate and saw there the body of a girl aged 12 and 16 who had previously disappeared, and she was killed in the same way as the recent victims. Count Kristoff has reasons to kill Princess Pippin, because his children will then be heirs to the throne, namely Charlotte. Suddenly, Elle appears in a beautiful white dress with a bouquet in her hands. Theo is delighted with the image. Elle learns that this is the dress of the Countess in which she went to the coronation. Amelie thinks that if her husband hears the news about the wedding, he will immediately return. Theodore says that his father will not return because he was killed during the Earl of Lorraine's rebellion at the coronation of His Highness Clare. Elle also understands that the Countess was thinking about her and Theo's wedding, and informs her that their relationship is purely business in nature. The girl is uncomfortable that because of her selfishness, she made the Countess think something unknown, and she feels uneasy. Theodore asks Elle if her words mean that there is absolutely nothing between them. The girl says that he himself knows perfectly well, because he himself said that it was a mistake, although then Theo lied, because he thought that the girl regretted that night. Elle asks if he will take back his words about the mistake if she admits that she did not regret it. Theodore answers in the affirmative. The girl says she didn't regret the kiss until Theo said it was a mistake, but then she did. And in fact, when she is near him, she somehow feels good, but she no longer wants such misunderstandings to arise. It would be better if she got angry and screamed at Theodore, then he would have a chance to fix everything. The boy takes Elle's hand and asks him not to go. He says that he actually made a mistake, but all his feelings are real and he really likes Elle. The girl hears these words again and says that he does not think about the feelings of others at all. Knights conduct their training as usual. Lucy notices that something strange is happening between Elle and Theodore, although Morris finds their behavior normal. It seemed to the girl that they were somehow distant from each other. Suddenly their conversation is interrupted by Elle, who says that she is waiting for them in her office after training. There are papers with the addresses of all the underage girls on the table. Morris offers to narrow the scope of searches. Theodore wants to understand what Elle is thinking, but they are back to where they started. He sees the behavior of his mistress as not cold, but not very friendly either, just indifference. It seems that the girl decided to pretend that there was nothing between them. This really upsets Theodore, and he is unable to change it. Some of the names on the list during Elle's trial. Theodore says he believes they will be able to prevent further murders. The commander says that it is necessary to catch the murderer. What is the point of identifying possible victims? He also informs that among the Knights of November there is a person who has been chasing the Queen for five years. First of all, this person would like to summon Lady Elb and interrogate her, due to the fact that two past victims were associated with the Elf fan club. The commander says that it's just a coincidence, but these people completely do not believe the words. The man promises his superiors that they will not allow a third murder. The commander reports on the joint meeting. He also says that until they catch this thief, no one will go home. Maris thinks that she will sleep in the same room with Theodore, but when he goes in, he sees Lucy there. Maris and Lucy understand that they have been given one room to sleep in, and Elle will now spend the night with Theodore. Elle enters her room and sees that someone is already sleeping under the blanket. She thinks that it is Lucy. Lying down on the bed, Elle sees Theodore in front of her. The head of the Knights of October, Mr. Blanche, promises that they will cover criminals, and there is no need for lists of underage girls. They approach the ship and see Adelaide there. The knights ask her for information about the owner of this vessel. It seems to the girl that they are some bandits. With this conclusion, Adele is rude to the knights. Blanche repeats herself and asks where the owner of this ship is. He is sure that this ship will go east very soon. 
The girl says that she does not know why they show such interest in this ship, but what they are looking for is right in front of them. She reports that this ship belongs to her. Meanwhile, Maris assumes that the keys were simply confused. The boy tells Lucy that he will leave and that Elle should be warned, but the girl stops him. She says that the boy himself saw that Elle and Theodore had some problems recently. She suggests not to interfere and give them the opportunity to be alone. The girl thinks that it will be better if Morris stays here for some time. Besides, she wanted to be alone with him. Theodore understands that everything will be fine with him, but if his mistress is caught here now, she will be in trouble. Meanwhile, the commander calls Morris from the room. Entering the room, the commander sees that Theodore himself is lying on the bed. The guy says that Morris hasn't come in yet. Meanwhile, Elle is hiding under the blanket lying on Teodora. The girl wants to move away from the boy, but he presses her to him. The commander tells Theodore to tell Morris when he returns that the boy should come to him. Suddenly, the man notices that Theodore has a very big stomach under the blanket. The girl decides that it is better to get out and say hello, because you cannot hide anything from her commander. But suddenly the man offers Theodore to improve his training, because he thought that Theodore really has a big stomach, and not that someone is hiding there. The guy says that he will take it into account and thanks for the advice. Elle feels that Theo's heart is beating fast. The commander leaves the room, rejoicing that he is in much better shape than Theodore. Elle gets out from under the blanket, saying that she almost suffocated, and thanks the boy for the rescue. Like Morris, the girl assumes that someone mixed up the keys and there was a mistake. Suddenly, Theodore throws a blanket over Elle, saying that if he just leaves everything like that, she will never agree to listen to him, so he took her prisoner. The guy says that somehow their relationship recently got complicated. From that very day he practically did not sleep, because his mistress never once looked at him. Elle wants to ask only one question. Why is she his mistress? What now? What then? Her questions have not changed, because Theodore never answered them. He once announced that he has been chasing the killer from the Earl of Lorraine's estate for five years. And even at a recent meeting, he somehow knew in advance the names of the killer's possible victims. The girl asks if he can explain it to her. Theo says that even if he explained, she still wouldn't believe it. Elle says she doesn't hate him, she just can't let feelings she doesn't understand take over anymore. Theo says she can tell what that feeling is. He may not be able to explain everything, but she can believe. The guy says that he does not regret a single minute spent with his mistress. Blanche thanks Adele for her cooperation. He was just curious to know if this ship is leaving today, when it will be in the west again. And the rest does not interest him, and he says goodbye. To the girl, this man seems like a bandit and it is obvious that he knows L. is he one of the knights. Why would the knights be interested in her ship? And they still have unresolved issues with L. Although the ship is already sailing today, Adele wanted to check if everything is in order and collect the money for the hire. It seems to her that something is wrong here, until she herself makes sure, calms down. Meanwhile, Maris and Lucy are standing on the balcony. She seems unusually quiet to the boy. He has no idea what conversations they can have with Lady Lucy alone. The guy can't think of anything better than to talk about work. They agree that Elle is very diligent. For some reason it became difficult for Maris to look into Lady Lucy's eyes. Something has changed. For some reason he has become shy in front of her and he cannot joke. Maris continues to tell something about work. Suddenly, the girl asks why the guy avoids her gaze. Maris says that this is not true, although he is not looking at her even now. The guy thinks it's because he feels guilty for looking at her while she was changing. The girl continues to say that he is somehow not the same as usual, and wants to look at him carefully. The girl almost falls. She ends up in Maris's arms. For the first time, the girl sees Mr. Morris blush so much. The guy seems very hot to her. Lucy believes that Maris stayed up all night trying to figure out the killer's plans. It throws him sometimes into the cold, then into the heat. The girl asks to wait, because she has very effective medicine. The girl prepared medicinal tea for the young man but he apologizes and leaves, saying that he has urgent business. Finally, the commander finds the boy. He says that he urgently needs to talk with him and Elle. Meanwhile, Elle thinks that if she's going to waver, what's the point of constantly pushing Theodore away? She believes that his view is against the rules. She believes that if she allows Theodore to break her again, she will definitely regret it. The girl notices that the door is still open. She is afraid that someone will not notice them. Elle decides to hide behind the bed, but Theodore lies down next to her. Because of this act, Theodore begins to think that he is very unpleasant to her and asks for forgiveness for this. Elle tries to leave, but Theodore kisses her again. Elle and Theodore continue to kiss. Suddenly, the girl pushes the guy away, asks for forgiveness, and offers to pretend that nothing happened. She says it was a mistake. 
Theodore asks if it's because he called it a mistake last time. The girl says that it is possible. That day, like an idiot, she wanted to take responsibility for her actions. Knights must always remain pure, which means that they must always be able to bear this burden. She was too naive. What's so special about an ordinary kiss between a man and a woman? However, as then and now, she does not want to run away from Theo. That is why she says that she cannot continue like this. She disappointed the Countess. And the reason for this was that she previously made her expect something that should not have been expected. She asks Theodore for forgiveness. And now, in the face of what she has to protect, she lacks the courage to take responsibility. In the morning, everyone greets each other. When Lucy sees Morris, she asks him why he's so early. She thought he wouldn't come to practice today. The girl asks if he has recovered. The knights have questions about Maris's possible illness. The guy does not understand how to be. It was not enough to blush like yesterday. He decides to stay away from Lady Lucy for the time being. A commander from El is coming to the training. They report that from this moment on, the Knights of November are going on increased patrols. Every home in the West where underage girls live will be under surveillance. Children who fall under the category of possible victims of the killer will be divided into lists and will be monitored around the clock. Lucy notices that Theo is not in the mood today, even though she tried so hard to buy them more time yesterday. Did nothing happen to Elle? Lucy tells Theodore that whatever bad mood he's in, he shouldn't show it to everyone. This time he goes on patrol together with Lucy. The girl says that no one wanted to pair up with him, and she had to do it. All persons from the list live in slums. Maris is not very strong in battle, and in case Elle will have to cover him. The boy is a little worried about Theodore's reaction to the fact that Elle switched places with Lucy. He does not want him to take revenge on him for this. Elle asks for forgiveness for what she did in her own way. Maris remembers his childhood, when Elle was a head taller than him. In those days, she was better than him in wrestling, physical exercises and swordsmanship, and he always lived in contemplation of her. The boy says that even now nothing has changed, Elle is still better than him in everything. Suddenly, the knights see that they are surrounded by some people. Elle decides that due to their number, it is necessary to run away. Maris runs very slowly and Elle sees no other choice but to stop and protect him. People who ran after them ask the knights if the buttons on their clothes are made of silver. The thieves warn that if the knights refuse to give them their good, they will be forced to use force. Obviously, a fight cannot be avoided. Princess Pippin demands that Francois rewrite his work again, because she does not like his handwriting. The princess receives an offer to have dinner today with her highness, that is, her mother. But she is forced to refuse, because today afternoon she and Charlotte are going to visit the Corps of Knights of November. Francois asks Pippin to go with her, he promises to obey her well and not cause problems. The princess does not want to take him with her, but the boy has only sent letters to Elle, but he has not received an answer to any of them. He wants to look at her at least from afar, although the princess thinks it's a good idea. If Francois sees Elle with Theo, it will make him angry and she will let him go with them. Meanwhile, Elle defeated the thieves without even getting her sword. Suddenly, the boy is attacked, and he is forced to defend his life by himself, and he is sure that he will succeed. But Maris is defeated. Realizing that they could kill the boy, although they just wanted to scare them, the thieves decide to run away. In fact, the guy was just pretending. More importantly, they left behind a pouch bearing Callie's trademark. Callie's trade group is the largest in the West, which means they had no need to rob other people. This means that they are not merchants, but sailors. They also had a somewhat non-local accent, and they had obviously never held a sword either, and they looked somewhat ragged, as if after a long swim. However, Callie's sales group was managed by Monica's relatives. After the murder, there was no special control over trading points, and many traders did not receive money. And since there was no money, they could not return home either. Morris asks if it will be right to let them go so easily, because it is not too late to catch up with them. Elle says to forget about it because they had no intention of killing them. There is no point in chasing people who are only following orders. If this bag was important to them, they will return for it. Maris mentions that the second victim was also the merchant's daughter. Every year they send a delegation to the east, which means that the target of the queen is not only the princess. She specifically wants to sabotage the development of trade business in the east. Theo and Lucy set the dishes to wash. The girl asks if it doesn't seem to Theodore that they are standing still. Out of inattention, Theodore hits the plate again. The girl thinks that if they see a mountain of broken dishes, she herself will bear all the responsibility. And the girl offers Theodore to rest while she herself does the dishes. The guy says that he will finish what he started. Besides, he is afraid that if he leaves everything now, he will simply lose his mind. 
Theodore says, is it possible that he did not have to do anything at all? But he also cannot pretend that nothing happened. He still feels as if he is holding Al in his arms. Lucy asks what exactly she shouldn't have done and says that she can give advice. Theodore refuses the advice and it seems to him that if his mistress hates him even more, he will want to settle accounts with his life. Suddenly, someone bursts in the door and tells the commander that they have finally found him. Lucy and Theodore have not seen the commander, but they ask him how long he has been here. It is reported that Her Highness the Princess visited the Corps of Knights of November. The knights meet the princess. Such an unexpected visit makes even the commander nervous. Unfortunately, everything happens at a time when Lady L has not yet returned. Theodore says that the princess probably has a lot of free time to make such visits. The princess replies that she always has time to meet L, but Theo's face makes her even more curious. She asks what happened to him. When Pippin is informed that L has not yet returned from her mission, the princess says that she has no reason to stay here anymore and is angry with Theodore for it. Meanwhile, Francois asks one of the knights to deliver the letter to L. While the princess is waiting for her favorite knight, she watches the training. She was always interested in how L trains. One of the knights reports that Lady L was seen at the gate. Charlotte pulls Pippin to meet L. Suddenly, the girls see L jumping from a high tower. Charlotte was so scared for L that she even tripped and fell. And only now did the girl notice that her mother was there. Besides, it wasn't Lady L. Charlotte is getting very hurt. Maris approaches her and offers help. The guy takes the girl in his arms and is going to take her to the medical center. On the way they meet Lucy. Francois left Elle a note asking for a meeting and is waiting for her in the garden. But Theodore came instead of his beloved. Francois tells Theo that he kept going wherever he was going because he is in no mood to talk to him today. Theodore takes a love letter from the boy, which was intended for Elle. That time Elle's betrayal also began with letters, but a huge army under the banner of Blois was waiting for her outside. Everyone knew that she had a hard time with the breakup. Everyone thought that Elle would open the gate, but she didn't. But this time the composition of the letter is completely different. It's just some kind of love confession. Francois demands from Theodore that he give him the letter. But Theo says it's impossible. If he doesn't give it back, he can annoy its owner again. Francois shouts that it's none of his business, because he himself knows that he and he are no match for each other. Theodore asks who he thinks she traded her former lover for at that party. Francois is not going to give in to Theodore. He says that L is a knight with a capital letter, but he is not. He is the most hated representative of humanity for L. The boy says that Theodore is just a wild dog that is violent and easily kills people. Theodore takes Francois by the skin, but he continues to say that L would never love him. Theo leads the boy to the abyss, there is water at the bottom, and he cannot swim. Francois knows what to do to get Theo off of him. He says that even now Theodore is thinking about how to kill him. Suddenly, Elle joins their conversation. Francois catches a great opportunity to get rid of Theodore. He tearfully explains to the girl that he hasn't done anything yet, and Theodore teases him again that he's at a party, that he can't leave him alone now. Theodore guesses that in this way Francois wants to win Elle over to his side. Elle calmly orders Theodore to take his hands off Francois. The girl says that there is a murderer on the loose, and he decided to add more worries. Theodore tries to find an excuse, but Elle doesn't want to listen to it. She is sure that among the knights there should not be those who do not value human life. Such words she said to Theodore at the party. Were these words an empty sound for Theodore? The girl says that she does not need an assistant who does not know how to listen. From today he is no longer a knight. Francois gives Elle the letter, but she says that she seems to have made it clear that she doesn't want to see his letters. But obviously he has no business with her wishes. Elle asks Francois not to force himself on her anymore. It seems that Elle finally threw Francois out of her heart. At the moment when Theo saw the first victim of the Queen five years ago, Charlotte met him at the crime scene. When Charlotte wakes up in the med station, she sees Lady L in front of her. L is glad that something very bad did not happen to the princess. The princess sees that L is very sad. She guesses that it is because of Theo. Charlotte wants to confess to the lady that she really likes her. But she is afraid that L will hate her because of these words and asks what song she can choose for her. L says that this is the first time she has seen the princess like this. It turns out that she is even more strange than the girl thought. Seeing Pippin off, L says that next time she will come to see her at the palace. But the princess does not believe in these words. Even today, when she came here herself, she remained unnoticed by anyone. And although she is her princess, Pippin asks the girl if she remembers that in a couple of months the day of creation will come. The biggest holiday of the kingdom of Ron, dedicated to its creation. Officially, this day is considered the time when delegations from the east arrive in the kingdom of Ron. Although all the years the holiday passed like clockwork, 
but this time Pippin has a bad feeling. Therefore, in order for the auction to be successful and without incident, she entrusts the control of everything to L. L sees Theodore but passes by. The guy says that he was wrong. He promises that he will never again devalue human life. Just like a shadow, he will quietly follow her. Theo hugs the girl and says that even if the mistress hates him, he will not do anything. L pushes Theodore away, but the boy asks and begs not to ask him to leave her anymore. The auctions start tomorrow, and the criminal probably really targeted the traitor's children. Theodore is not next to L again, although she drove him away. L thinks about Theodore. Suddenly Morris asks why she suddenly became silent. The girl gave Theo a deadline of exactly Sunday. She thinks that this is enough to pass the case. A week has already passed, and according to the plan, Theodore is supposed to leave the nights forever. Although Elle wanted it so much herself, her soul hurts a lot. Her whole head is loaded with thoughts. She no longer knows what is right and what is wrong. Maris came for Theodore. They ride together on a horse. The boy wonders why he did it. It turns out that Maris came because today is Theodore's last day in the nights. That's why he wanted to spend it. Theo asks who said he was going. Recently, some nervousness of Elle is very noticeable. Maris thinks that it is because of Theodore. The boy asks Theo how much longer he intends to hide from Elle. Also, he is interested. If he didn't think so in you, then where they are going now. The boys reach the narrowing of the road, and then Theodore decides to walk. They are located next to the house of Audrey Moriat. Although she is not a member of the Elle fan club, her father participates in the bidding every year to enter the delegation. She is probably now under the supervision of the Knights of November. Maris believes that they came here for nothing. The boys knock on the door. A little girl opens them. The boys ask the girl where Audrey is now. The girl says that her sister went to meet a fair-haired boy. Theodor abruptly leaves. At night, the boy passes by the place of execution. This place inspires him with sadness. In this place, in front of a noisy crowd, stood defenseless Elda Blois. And then her severed head rolled on the scaffold and he sat with her head in his own hands. Without this girl, Theodore's life will stop its course. The boy is afraid that he will not be able to save Elle. Maybe it would be better to deal with everyone like last time. But so Elle would hate him only more. Now Theodore thinks about a killer who only knows how to choose defenseless children as victims and kill them so that he does not plan there. Theo promises that he will not see Elle. The guy comes to the meeting and tells his opponent that it is impolite to make people wait. Apparently he will have to be taught a lesson. The opponent was none other than Andre. Andre says that if you think about it, it's already too late. The boy admits that he thought Theodore would grab him as soon as he entered the estate. To Theo, it sounds like the guy was waiting for him. Theodore takes Pippin's apple from Andre's bag, and he says that every time after a murder, the queen leaves these apples at the scene of the crime. He tells Andre that he obviously wanted apples at such a late hour. Or is it something else? Theodore asks if he killed Audrey, whom he met today. The guy starts with the fact that he and Audrey are from the same city and have been friends for a long time. So, in general, how did Theodore get the idea that he could kill him? Andre says that without any evidence he is just accusing an innocent person. He asks if Theodore is doing this to him because he is loyal to Count Lorraine, and adds that it will not bring Count Claremont back. Theodore says that he heard that his cousin Charlotte picked Andre up outside in the cold. Because of this, he is willing to do anything to protect Charlotte. Andre asks what Theodore means by this. Theo says he made a mistake and shouldn't have jumped to conclusions about Andre. And if the servant had been a modest, it would have been very easy for Madame Charlotte to be caught. Andre can't stand it and demands to shut up. He says that if Theodore lays a finger on his mistress, he will not leave Theo alone. Andre begins to get a sword somewhere. Theodore says that if Andre touches him, he will pay with his life. Will he be able to protect his lady then? Suddenly, Lucy appears, she tells Theodore that she has finally found him. The girl reports that there was a disaster, the third murder, Matthew was killed. Now Theodore understands that the third victim was not Audrey. Andre asks how to be now. It seems that Theodore will not be able to save his lady. Two hours earlier, Elle was arrested for another murder. Maris tells the commander that he does not understand what they want to achieve by arresting Elle. In this situation, only one person can save Elle and this is Theodore. The guy remembers that last time everything was the same. Everyone was waiting for the fall of L. Everyone hoped for it. After all, it is so interesting to watch how birds of the highest flight fall and crash. Voting for L's dismissal from work begins. These knights receive confirmation that all of the killer's victims were connected to Lady Bloy's support group. They cannot allow such, in their opinion, a dangerous person to continue to hold his position. 
Also, the knights suspect L of involvement in the murder. The girl understands that the queen wants to put all the blame on her, the defender of her highness. Voting begins. If anyone present agrees with the dismissal of Lady Blois, then they must show a red card. If they do not agree, a blue card. Already half of the knights raised a red card. Suddenly a noise is heard behind the door. Someone is trying to get to the assembly hall. This is Theodore. He is very angry and opens the door with his foot. The guy greets and says that he came to fetch his mistress. Theodore begins to draw a sword. The boy is asked what he can afford. One of the knights suggests not to make too much noise and continue voting. Only one man is going to raise the card when Theodore cuts it with his sword. He is standing on the table directly in front of this person. L is afraid that he is going to make the same kind of mess that he did at the inauguration. Theo approaches L, but removes the sword. The guy apologizes for being late. Someone yells at L that if she leaves now, she will have to answer for it later. He asks how she dares to involve Theodore in her adventure. L doesn't really want to run away, but she wants to take Theo's hand. The protection does not allow steam, but one of the knights orders them to let them pass. But he warns Theodore that this time he will let him go, but only for the sake of her highness. Theodore says afterwards that they will stop there. L says that she was sure that Theodore left, but ask him why he came back. The guy says that he didn't go anywhere, but asks where she met a dog that would leave its owner. The girl asks how long ago she became his mistress. Once little Theodore was going to show the flowers he had picked for his mother to his brother Robert. Only in the estate of the Count of Lorraine so many flowers grow. So Robert guesses that his brother has met Charlotte again. Although he told Theodore not to contact the Lorraines. Robert tells his brother that his father did not disappear, but was killed by the Count of Lorraine. The boy is frightened, but says that he will not be like this again. A lot of time has passed since the Count of Clermont disappeared, but the Countess still couldn't find a place for herself. Several seasons have changed, and everything that happened has become familiar. The Countess was still suffering from the loss of her husband, and Theodore was quite fed up with it. Although his life as the second son of the Earl of Clermont was not as bad as he thought. He fought with his friends. At that time he lived without thinking about anything. He was also not an exemplary cadet at the academy. Then Elle de Blois appeared, offering him to spar with her. Theodore then said that he does not compete with girls. The girl says that she considered him a worthy opponent, because she, like him, has never been inferior in sparring. The guy took her to a cafe after he lost, because the loser had to treat him. Then the girl kept talking about another boy, and she confessed that she loves him, Franca. And Theodore thought that she was the same doll without feelings as he was. For some reason, at that moment Elle's presence began to annoy him. Everyone said how lucky Theodore was that he was from the royal family, and they believed that no matter how much they worked in training, he would still get into the royal guard. In her senior year, Elbe was forced to join the ranks of the November Knights, although with her grades, she could easily get into the royal guard. Then she heard that the Knights of November are paid very well. After the initiation ceremony, a long time passed before they met again, and so five years flew by. After the initiation ceremony, their life changed with Elbe. The girl who hoped to join the ranks of the Knights of November. Theodore became part of the royal guard and the personal bodyguard of the princess. After a short time, they had a short conversation. Then Elle told him that she heard the news that a couple of days ago someone stole the princess, and Theodore saved her. Theodore replied that he did not know that he and she were so close to exchange flattery like that. And he asked if she was also trying like all those who are desperately trying to get connections through the princess's personal guard. L says that there are probably enough such people in his environment, and adds that she is not like that, and just wanted to congratulate her former classmate. From the boy's words, the girl understands that it is probably not easy for him to perform such a difficult duty. Theodore asks what she can know about him in general, and suddenly Charlotte approaches them. She searched for Theo for a long time. The princess says that Pippin is having a tea party and has invited Theo to it. Pippin reminds Charlotte that she didn't invite Theo. The princess tells Theodore to confirm that it is very sad here and being her personal bodyguard is another happiness. She's sure that when she was kidnapped, he was saving her life purely for fun. Charlotte hints to Pippin that Theo risked his life by saving her. Theo says the princess is telling the truth. He was only doing his job so as not to anger her highness Claire. If he was a sincere person, would he start drinking tea with Charlotte? who is hated by his older brother. And so he lived as a personal bodyguard of the princess for five years, when suddenly Theodore received a letter. It was a letter from his father. The Count appointed a meeting for his family at the Eastern Gate. Theodore does not even remember his father's face, and now he is asking him for a meeting. 
So the first feeling that arose in the boy after reading the letter was anger. The boy still decides to meet. After opening the gate, Theodore sees a bunch of soldiers with banners. His foolish choice led to the arrest of L. He really did not want this and felt that he had done something wrong. And so, five years later, their first meeting took place. Arriving at the girl's prison, the boy said that all this was planned to accuse Blois of treason. The guy also asked if she knew who opened the gate and because of whom she was arrested. L says that she knows everything. Theo asks why she won't reveal the truth. He tells her to tell him that Theodore has assembled a fake army under the banner of Blois in an attempt to stage a rebellion. He does not care even if he is executed for this. L asks if it is still true that wealth and high position do not make him happy. The girl refuses to tell everyone this truth. But she doesn't want to die like that either. She has to take care of her family. She also has a growing little sister. Theodore asks why she doesn't want to do it then. He does not understand why she tries so hard for him, someone she barely knows. In fact, the girl does not want to order to be executed. The girl says that it is characteristic of knights to help others in trouble, and he will not understand this until he tries it himself. Elle promises to try to overcome these difficulties. She tells Theodore that they will live. Theodore began to come to her every day. The boy realized that he now lives for her. The girl says that Morris's mother was her mother's deputy. He and Maris grew up together. Morris was constantly causing problems for his mother. When they found out that Elle had been arrested, they cried very bitterly. Theodore asks the girl to tell more about herself. Theodore had said before that he hated it when she said anything at all. The guy says it's because she kept talking about this Francois. Elle tells Theodore that he really cannot be understood, which is why she likes to spend time with him. Theodore understands that if she disappears, then he will never be able to fill the emptiness inside him that will remain after her. Now Theodore cannot forget the girl who gave her life for him. If he could, he would also give his life for her. The knights meet Elle and Theodore. They are happy to see that Elle has been freed. Today, the knights gathered not to discuss crimes, but to celebrate. Today Elle wants to get drunk. The girl has already drunk so much, but still for some reason she cannot calm down, let alone get drunk. Is it because she thought Theodore was gone, when in fact he wasn't, that her heart was beating so hard? In any case, it is true that he helped her, which means she needs to thank him. Suddenly Theodore disappears somewhere, and it turns out that he came to talk with Elle. Theodore touches Elle's hand under the table. The guy offers to go out for some fresh air. Elle informs Theodor that she has to tell him something. Suddenly Theo puts his head on the girl's shoulder. He says that he is so sad that he wants to die. Elle admits that she is also not feeling well. The girl apologizes for saying too much when she saw him and Francois. So she asks Theo to turn back. Theodore asks if this is all. The boy says that the owner does not need to take responsibility for him today. The couple is kissing again. After the kiss, Elle tells Theodore to go first, and she will come in five minutes. In this way, unnecessary gossip and misunderstandings will not arise, and she would also like to come to her senses a little. Before leaving, Theodore kisses Elle again. The guy says that she didn't say the most important thing, and asks to come back soon, because he will miss her. Lucy sees that Theo came alone, although she noticed that they were leaving with Elle. The girl thinks that Theodore cried because of his red eyes after talking with Elle. Lucy offers Theo to drink her special cocktail. It will help reveal his sincere feelings. Elle suddenly bursts in and stops Theodore and Lucy, because she sees that Theodore is a little drunk now. But if he drinks this cocktail as well, then trouble cannot be avoided. She does not want him to drink something extra. And only Theodore is going to drink a cocktail. How Elle cuts him down. The girl orders Marissa to urgently call an ambulance. On the street, Maris gives Elle the keys to Theodore's room. All the same, it was the last day of the meeting, although the commander said that it would continue until the day when the queen was caught. In fact, this meeting was arranged for Elle so that when the next murder happened and suspicion fell on her, she would have an alibi. Maris warns that now she has to be more careful. The head office won't forget Theodore's exit so easily. Elle offers Marissa to go with them, because he shared the same room with Theodore. But the guy refuses again. Suddenly, Lucy catches up with her friends and asks them to take her with them. The girl says that at first she wanted to get very drunk, to forget herself in alcohol. Elle offers her to share with her. Lucy says that she and Mr. Maris have been together since childhood. They are like brother and sister. So she shyly asks if she knows if Mr. Maris likes Princess Charlotte or if they are already dating. Elle says it's a silly reason to worry. This made Lucy a little angry, and she tells Elle that she is too cruel, because the girl confided this only to her. Elle has known Princess Charlotte for five years, and still, every time there is a conversation about Maris, the princess does not even remember what he looks like, because besides Lady Elle, others look somehow unremarkable to her, so she does not remember them. 
Now Lucy realizes that she was wrong about Maris and Princess Charlotte's relationship. The girl abruptly stops the carriage and gets out, returning back to the celebration. She says that she had some business here, so she came back, and alcohol flows out of a whole vat in joy. Lucy gets very drunk and, as always, begins to cling to everyone. The commander understands that it is time to run away from the celebration. Maris asks if anyone knows who watched in the toilet, because there is such horror. Lucy promises that she will clean up after herself and kisses Maris on the cheek. He apologizes a little, but says that there was an error. After the kiss, the knights begin to discuss whether the rumors about Maris and Lady Lucy's secret relationship were true. The commander says that obviously, they are not the only ones who hide their relationship. Meanwhile, Elle carries Theodore to bed. Now Theodore is peacefully sleeping in bed. Elle notices that the boy has adopted an uncomfortable sleeping position, but corrects his hand. Come to think of it, she never heard the reason why she became his mistress, but one day she would learn the whole truth. Holding the sleepy boy's hand, she admits that she was not completely honest with him either. There are still so many things she would like to ask Theodore. She says that the guy is so handsome that there must have been many girls he wanted to seduce. And maybe he has other girls in mind. During his training, he was known for his fickleness, so she wouldn't be surprised if one day he suddenly said he hated her. If something like this actually happens, she won't let go of him so easily. Therefore, it will be better if everything remains as it is now. The girl kisses Theodore. When Elle says goodbye to the sleeping Theodore and closes the door, he stands up sharply, thinking that he was almost ready to give up. Blanche follows a new group of poor people from the East who have been brought in to be sold. Adelaide is involved in this case. Blanche's subordinate asks him if they will simply look at them and do nothing. The boss tells the man to take his time, and asks him to imagine how wonderful it would be to kill all the aristocrats who buy these children. The knight says that if they don't intervene now, the criminals will escape, and then the October knights will be in big trouble. This angers Blanche, and he swings his hand at the boy. He orders to immediately send a letter to the knights of November. Blanche wants Elle to know that he needs her, because the girl always does what he tells her. In the morning, Elle greets Theodore and asks how he slept. The guy says that he slept quite well, only the back of his head hurts a little. Theodore says, holding Elle's head, that he was so sad that he almost didn't sleep, and now he managed to get some sleep. But they again forget that there is someone nearby, namely Maris. Suddenly, Lucy enters the office and tells Elle that they brought her a letter. After yesterday, Marissa is a little uneasy to see Lucy. Lucy sees that Maris is hiding from her behind Theodore's back, and it seems to her that he is already very tired of her. To hide her feelings from Maris, Lucy kisses Elle on the cheek. The girl says that she is very happy to see Elle, and she really often behaves like this with everyone. This letter from the Knights of October turned out to be empty. Elle understands that this was done on purpose, and Blanche waits for her to act. Lucy says that the Knights of October work in the north, and there are a lot of slums, so there are enough events there. She heard that the Knights of October are compared to wolves, and Mr. Blanche is so insane that he is called the king among wolves. Morris tells Elle behind Theodore's back that the Knights of November are not supposed to help Blanche with unofficial tasks, and she can opt out if she wants to. But Elle decides that help is still needed, because Blanche is now chasing human traffickers in the east, and her highness will be happy if this problem is solved. Also, the girl notices in the envelope something similar to an entrance ticket with today's date on it. Maybe that's where the traffickers are based. Why did Blanche invite her? Suddenly, Chucky appears in the office and says that he is also coming. Elle orders the boy to forget about it and think about it, and not get into this business. Chucky asks Elle to take him with her because there might be kids like him there. Elle says that this is why he will not go there. If the boy goes there, it will be as if he voluntarily came to surrender to the merchants. Elle asks Lucy to help her get ready for the evening. But the boy does not think to give up so easily. The carriage for Lady Elle and Theo has already been served. Lucy did a good job of disguising Theo and Elle, they are simply unrecognizable. And now Mikhail and Luna come into play. The maid brings Charlotte food without a fork. The princess is going to go get the appliance, but suddenly she overhears a conversation behind the door. One of the maids tells the other that, despite the fact that she is Princess Charlotte's maid, she somehow feels uncomfortable. She heard from her acquaintance, a knight, that apparently the murderer only attacks family members. Some say that the killer specifically chooses children from merchant families, but the third victim did not concern companies. Therefore, apparently, she was killed because she was a member of the family. Charlotte immediately runs to Andre. The guy is worried that his lady doesn't catch a cold, because she went outside in very light clothes, although her body is already weak. The girl asks her servant to teach her how to wield a sword. 
Meanwhile, in the carriage, Elle tells Theodore that today she is Mrs. Luna from a port city in the north, and he is Mitchell, her servant, with whom she has a secret relationship. At first glance, the place they are going to is an ordinary theater, but in fact it is a large illegal auction that sells people from the eastern continent. Theodore thinks Elle has no idea how hard he tries to hide his secret desires. At the entrance, the guard says that he cannot accept their tickets. They explain this by the fact that this is not a place for a person like her, because they build everything on trust. Theodore decides to bribe the guard, and he succeeds. Elle does not see Blanche inside. Elle talks a lot about Blanche, and this makes Theodore jealous. One of the bandits says that some goods escaped, but he managed to catch them. It turns out that Chucky was sitting in the bag. The auction begins. One lady present spoke to Elle. She says that she noticed that the girl is here for the first time. In her opinion, she should have been there, above, then here, below. Elle asks if there is a difference. The woman says that she is ordinary, because they even treat you differently then. She tells that the real show is upstairs, in the VIP room. Elle asks her partner how much he is willing to pay for her today. Bandit notices that Chucky has a scar on his face, and this can be said about the quality of the product. The man says that he is now going to the doctor, and orders the boy to sit quietly in the room. The boy is released and is going to find other children. He smells a strange smell from one room. There he sees children sleeping on beds. Suddenly the bandit notices the boy. These people release sleeping gas. The auction continues. Elle and Theodore buy all the children at the auction. The woman sitting next to me says that a similar couple wants to offer a place on the second floor. Elle asks the woman what is the point of disguising herself and telling her everything. And the girl understands that this woman is Adelaide. Why is Adele here? Is she somehow involved in the human trafficking case? Elle and Theodora are invited to a room and asked to wait a little. Theodore thinks things were going too well and they must have shut them down. Elle tells him to pretend he doesn't know this. Elle realizes that she made a mistake. There is no way they would invite them to the upper floor for winning a large number of lots. The girl thinks that they have already guessed that she is hiding a sword under her dress and asks the boy to do something that will remove their suspicions. And the boy decides to continue this game of lovers, which is not really a game for them. Elle likes his plan, but she doesn't want everything to go too far. A couple passionately kisses, creating a mess on the table. Bandits think they want to break the window to get out, but they see the game of lovers and think that they were mistaken. They think the sound was coming from the fan and the security guard who suspected them was wrong. It also doesn't look like she has anything under her dress, and they think she really came here for fun. Elle asks how they are going to make up for the trouble they got. Elle is asked to follow them. The man admits that if they find out that he allowed them to enter the VIP room without permission, they will kill him. Elle asks why they took her there then. The man says it may sound strange considering his job, but he wants her to continue and redeem everyone. After all, the products on the first floor are not in such a bad position, and Elle and Teodor are invited to the second floor. A card and a pen are served. The girl wonders why this is, and the man who gave the pen with the card says that the upper floor does not work as an auction. Instead, she simply writes what she wants to buy on that card, and they know the perfect product for her. Meanwhile, Blanche and her knights are waiting on the roof. They do not act, because their commander wants to see the pious Elle de Blois, full of fury. Elb has already written her wish on a card. If you don't want to miss my new videos, support the channel by subscribing and don't forget to like the video.